It's 2 p.m. Detroit, and you know what that means. Detroit media icon Ryan Armani, University of Michigan great Braylon Edwards, and of course, Maz are about to take over on Woodward Sports. Every day, 2 to 4 p.m., it's the best Detroit sports talk on Detroit's best sports network. Woodward Sports. Hey, let's go Wednesday show, April 17th, 2024. Armani and Edwards with Mass Woodward Sports Network, woodwardsports.com, fox2detroit.com, the Fox local app if you are watching live. If you're on YouTube, part of the over 63,000 subscribers on this platform, we say hello. Hit that like button, subscribe to Woodward Sports, tell a friend about us as well. Braylon Edwards, good afternoon to you, my friend. Good afternoon to you, my friend as well. Hello, friends. In the words of Jim Nance. Hey, you know what's great about that open, Ryan, is is you just called it when we were off there. So Ryan hits a shot. We were shooting uh, down at Campus Marshes. This was last Monroe summer. Monroe Street Midway. Monroe Street Midway. Excuse me. Right by Campus Marshes. Uh, extremely hot that day, if I remember correctly. We were yes. sneaking in the shade. I, I spent most of my time in that bathroom, like right. the trailer bathroom. They had the shade. The, had the AC. Yep. But anyway, so Ryan's going out there. We got the court right there. Ryan never came out of the game. He is a Gross Point South legend. <laughs> It's like, you see everybody shooting these shots and going up and down. We're shooting our shows like, I want a piece of that. Right? I got this. So Ryan goes out there, and you see it in the open clear as day. Goes to the corner. I told Ryan to scoot back, ladies and gentlemen. I said, no, no, no. Scoot back a little bit. NBA no, three, you no said. No problem. He, Steph Curry size yeah. three. Takes a step back. Soon as he shot, I said, it's going in. Lord have mercy. Splash. Nothing but the bottom of the cup. I love that open. And looking at that. I'm getting so excited thinking about the draft because I can't believe the New York Jets trust me to make a pick. I may deviate Dude, off it's the so page, great. Guys, Brian. If I'm you deviating. Just, oh, if you yeah. just tune it in, Braylon is going to be <laughs> the former player for the New York Jets that announces their third round pick. They don't have a second round pick, yeah. so Jets go round one, round three. What if they make a trade? How, then, does, hey, how does that work? Then you go get you get up there for the second round pick. There you go. There you go. Tom Mazzuit, good yeah. afternoon to you, my friend. Hey, Ry. Hey, Bray. Pete, up, man? Mike. Hello, everybody. Great night last night, and then it wasn't. What a fun freaking third period to watch hey, man, for the Red Wings. Before you get into the Red Wings, cause I know you're going to break it down, you and Ryan. Can you pull your laptop down just a little bit? Just, just, just pull the laptop down. Yeah, sure. Just a little bit. Pete, put the TV back on. I just had to remind had people to that Michigan's it. national champs. 2023 oh, about national that. I just had to remind champions, people. About baby. 100%. Because there was we're a gonna lot. Talk, we're going to talk maize and blue today. So oh, we're going to get into maize and blue. But every once in a while, Ryan, you got to be reminded. The national champions. Not Big Ten champs. The national champions. Daddy. Unbelievable. 15-0, and 0, as Jim Harbaugh hey. says. We did that. <laughs> we no did stone that. stone unturned. We did that. Connor Stallions or not. I'll tell national you, man. Champs. When the, I'll just say. Last night, I don't know how the hell they tied that game up. I was telling my wife, they got one shot here. They got to win clean. They got to – I don't know how they scored. But there was never more screaming in the Mazaway house in the last 25 years than that. And the doors were open because it was a beautiful night out. I bet you my neighbors were like, what the hell's going on in there? Can I paint a picture for you real yes. quick? So I'm going to get up out of my chair for a second. Okay. So when I watch games that are intense in nature, I will, like, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's like a nervous thing, I'll just walk back and forth. Okay. Just walk back and forth like this. Okay. So I'm standing, I'm standing in front of my TV like this. My wife takes the dog out, okay? She takes the dog out. She looks at me and says, what are you doing? And I'm like, 30 seconds left because there was a timeout at the 30-second mark. Uh, I said, look at this. I said, they need to win to get in. The Flyers and Capitals are tied at one. So she sits down with me. She sits down. Okay. My wife is not a sports fan at all. At all. So for her to sit down and watch the end of this Shout game Shout out to Nicole. Me, Shout out Hermione. to Nicole. So for her to sit down and watch this with me was like in, just a thing. So she sits there, and then they ice the puck seven seconds. So they're going to get one shot at this. They're gonna get, just like you, Maz. You're, you're like, okay, face off clean, wow. one shot to the net. And boy, it wasn't even a clean face off. I mean, Larkin went down and just kind of scooted it back behind the back pass and a shot, and you were like, 
Oh my God. We jumped up. I was already up, but my wife jumps. Up. Oh yeah. my God. Oh my God. And then that might have been, and you know, we always say provocative things on the radio, yeah. on TV, on YouTube. Like, that was the most dramatic goal in Red Wings history. In the history of the Detroit Red Wings, find me a more dramatic goal that they have ever scored in any situation like that. Great call. Great call. We have never seen the Red Wings in over 100 years yeah. of hockey score a goal like that. Or at least, let me, let me because I don't know what happened in the 1930s, okay? In the last, overtime 97, maybe? In the last 40 years... But that was like a clincher. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. They were up. They were they yes. were leading in that okay. I'm just, situation. I'm just some stuff out there. Um, you know, the Steve Eiserman game seven goal against uh, the Blues. The Blues, yeah. And from, I understand, but that was a tie game. If, if he didn't make that shot, they weren't going to lose. They weren't going to be eliminated. In that situation, down by a goal, needing to win. Yeah. Never seen a goal like that in the history of the Detroit Red Wings. Wow. I haven't. If somebody in the chat, um, and, uh, well, Pete actually put it in there. Steve Eisman goal, it's different. That is an overtime goal. It's not not even, it's a different situation. This is a different situation. This is, this is score or you're out. Yeah. Score or you're done. Pressure. This uh, compared to me, I even told my wife this uh, in the few seconds we had. I'm like, this is what happened in 94. Devils, Rangers, one nothing. Eastern Finals, Game 7. Winner goes to the Stanley Cup Final. It's one nothing Rangers, and the Devils want to face off late, down low. Three seconds to go, two seconds, one second. Tip in by Zella Pukin, beats Richter. Game tied, goes to do double overtime. Rangers wound up winning. Stefan Matteau, Stefan Matteau. No. They win the Stanley Cup. Devils won the next year against the Red Wings. But that... You can't that that's it. That's the only comparison I could think of. Win, tie this game, or you're wow. out. And the Red Wings did it. I've like I said, I haven't loved hockey as much as I have loved it in the last ten years as I have the last two nights. That's it. And I want to thank them for, for giving that to us. Sure, they blew it in March. Things happen. Things happen. And I know there's people on Twitter last night killing them. Ah, they didn't deserve it. Ah, Eisenman should have won already. It's been five years, six years. Ah, blah, blah, blah. They, they, they're ready. They're ready to take the next step. This is what I would say about last night and the last three games in total. They won the last three games. They beat Montreal twice, and they beat uh, – All in overtime and shootouts. Exactly, and they beat Toronto. So you see what they're able to do. They're very resilient. That's what I would say about this bunch, at least at this particular point in the year. But it just pisses you off. It, it, just, it, just, it just makes you upset. That whatever happened five weeks ago, losing Skid fourteen and five, uh, uh, excuse me, five and fourteen, when Dylan Larkin wasn't in there. For everybody talking about that, Dylan Larkin got injured. My biggest issue, my, my biggest issue. This is the real thing, Ryan and Monty. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily zero and seven. It's not even necessarily the Skid they went on. It's not necessarily the Brinkett. You know, one goal in nineteen games. You know what it is, Maz? You played a two-game series two weeks ago against the Phoenix Coyotes. Or the, excuse, the Arizona Coyotes, or right. whatever the hell Soon their to name be Salt is Lake now. City. Wherever nope. the heck they play at now. You had a two game stand with those guys. In two games against the worst team in the NHL, eight to one is what the Red Wings lost in that two game stand wow. when it was crunch time. Like things like that is when you, you look yep. back and you get, you get even more upset. You get more upset because I can't fully enjoy what they did last night, what they did two nights ago or what they did against Austin Matthews and the Toronto Maple Leafs in an original six game, an original six matchup, which they came back. I can't fully enjoy it because I have to hold somebody accountable. And the people that you hold accountable are the players that you put in situations to help this team get to the next level. So I enjoyed three games win. I enjoyed last night. It was fun. It was fun. But when you look at that, it's not even the 0-7. The heck with the 0-7. We keep bringing it up. It's that Phoenix Coyotes, Arizona Coyotes, Two games dead. They're the worst team in hockey. They don't even yeah. deserve to have a hockey team. Mm. You let them score eight goals and you only score one. What Things like that is yeah. why I can't fully uh, What happened two it. years ago with the Lions? Who'd they lose to on Christmas Eve? 
two years uh, oh ago. Oh, yeah, Carolina, Carolina Panthers. Carolina. And it, and it blew their playoff spot. Identical to what you just you're, said. You're not lying. Identical. You're not lying. You know, um, it's it, a good call, it, man. I'm a big both things can be true guy. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? And, and just an example of that, and we talked about it, yeah, like, right. in relation to the OJ thing, right? This like is, This is true. You know, uh, yes. Hell of a uh, running back. You right. killed two people. Well, well yeah, and, and even, like, down to the trial, like, yes, uh, the way the evidence was collected was bad. Yes, racist cops were involved. Right. Yes, um, you know, OJ did it. <laughs> you know what I mean? He did. Like, yeah. all things can be OJ true. OJ did it. And kind of like you said, Maz, the last three nights of hockey, the, 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 the three-game winning streak to end the season, specifically the last 36 hours of hockey, yeah. were some of the greatest. That was the greatest 36 hours of hockey for me, in just personally for me, yeah. in a decade. Yeah. And yes, I am excited about watching hockey again. Yes, I am excited about the direction of this franchise. Yes, I am excited that I believe things are headed in the right direction. And yes, they absolutely had an epic collapse down the stretch, and this should have never happened. All things are true. Yep. Okay, let me not play downer and spoiler in this one. Let me let me let me move on from that. I play spoiler. I play downer. Now let me ask you a real question. You see what they're able to do when Dylan Larkins in the lineup. You see what it seems like they have the ability to be, which is the cardiac kids or the resiliency kids, whatever you want to call them. What move do they need to make, Ryan? What move do they need to make? Well, they Mad? need a goalie. And, okay, why? That's first and foremost. And that's one of the things. When I saw this, like, again, I'm no hockey savant. A lot okay? of been given up. I start paying attention a couple of weeks ago, to be honest with you. Okay. A couple of times dipping in and out of the season. But this Reimer kid, uh, who's 36 years old, he's no kid, yeah. way better than the Lion kid. What okay. To Uso? Um, He's been up and down with Grand Rapids in the wings. Jeez. Alex Lyon, to me, who has gotten the majority of the games in the last couple of weeks of the season, why was it? Was Reimer hurt? Did I, do I not know something? I mean, I, I, I don't know. You got me. I mean, but uh, Alex Lyon uh, had a rough couple of days. Ozzy was up in the booth. Maybe they should have called him down again. I'm telling you, man. I'm disappointed that they're not moving on because I really would have been locked in for Rangers Red Wings. Now, like, I, re now I really don't. I don't really give a damn, and, I, it's, and I don't. And Maz, it's one of those things too where we talk about it's not who you play; it's when you play them. Yep. And over the last three games, who is as hot or who has more confidence in the Detroit Red Wings? Now they and made Lucas it Rainier. really difficult on themselves. The I Capitals mean, down four one, <laughs> down four, you know, four two. Washington, yeah. Did you uh, hear Ken Daniels? He said they're minus 38 goal differential. He doesn't remember a team that's made a playoff with that bad of a disparity, yet they continue to win. And they beat Philly last night. They got a little help from the refs, but they beat Philly. <laughs> and what Ken Daniels told us yesterday, I'm afraid if it's true. a tie game in the third, they pull their goalie because they got to win in regulation. Yeah. They pulled the goalie about four minutes to go. Philly scores. I mean, uh, Washington scores. And then Philly almost ties it up again. Who knows what could have happened. But you saw how dejected the Red Wings were. Even though when they tied the game, they had no idea yet. But then in between the commercial break, they look up and the game was over. And you could tell every single you one of those shooters. You know, that was 90 shooters. seconds later in real yep. time. Every after, one of those shooters yeah. knew it's over. Uh, two things. One, uh, <laughs> Tiger Town, he said, blame the waste management patch. That's one thing he said, which... They went on. They started that skid when they get, when they got the pets. Also, D, DJ Tom T. What's up, Tom T. What's up, Tom. Tom also said, "Hey, the same thing you say." He said, "Gully, but also a top first line defenseman guy, but player." Yeah. Yeah. No, they they absolutely need depth. I think they need to bring back Patrick Kane. I absolutely, think, absolutely. But, you know, but they have depth. Like that was a big thing about them. You had eleven guys that had over eleven goals and had twenty points or more. Blah blah blah. Like you had the depth. You don't have that stud, and I think that's you do now. With DJ Ta His name Lu is Lucas Raymond. Lucas Raymond. You saw he did fourteen goals in the last seventeen games. He's gonna score so, at least forty next year. One hundred, maybe more. But do you need somebody else? Yeah, had... sure. Yeah, sure. Right. No, yeah. Um, nah, my bad. Uh, no, you're good. I was asking Tom a question. Um, is Keith calling us or is what? Yeah, he's gonna be on the on the oh, V mix. Oh, on the V mix. Okay. Yeah. Um. All right. Let me. Yeah.
let me know when he's up. Uh, we'll keep going, but let me know when he's up. Okay, very good. Um, and we'll get him up right now, then. Let's bring in Keith Gave, offer of the Russian Five. There he is. Vlad the Impaler, former Freight Wings reporter. You can find him on Twitter, on X, at Keith Gave. Keith, how are you, my friend? Hey, Keith. Uh, I'm great, gentlemen. How you doing? I could be I could be better myself, too. No doubt about it. I mean, we, we were just talking in here, Keith, that the last 36 hours of hockey, for me, yeah. was some of the most exciting hockey that I have seen in the last decade as a Red Wings fan. I mean, that was every night, hold your breath, can't uh, imagine um, can't imagine this ending anytime soon, but here we go. It was fun, that's for sure. They made it interesting. Um, you know, they, they, they had this thing in their hands and blew it. You guys are talking ad nauseum about that, but uh, they came, you know, they, they, they missed the playoffs by zero points. How close, how much closer can you get? Yeah, you can't yeah, get right. much closer, and and then this you can true. go ahead and examine the NHL tiebreaker rules. I mean, the Red Regulation Wings have, wins. Yeah, I mean, I just yeah. it's it's incredible, but you got to play by the rules. But Keith, um, what do you make of where this team is right now? Um, obviously, we all wanted to see them be in the playoffs. That was a goal, I think, for the organization, for many fans. But now that they did, they haven't. What have you seen out of this team this year? that you believe, maybe you do, maybe you don't, uh, that this team is on the track that's that everybody wants it to be on? Well, I think they're on the track for sure. But uh, you guys hit on it just a few minutes ago, talking about the holes on this roster still, and there are a lot of them. The, uh, the trajectory has been good. I think they're still on the ascent. But there are many things that the general manager has to do to uh, make this team a legitimate, not a bubble playoff team but a legitimate playoff team they need they need to shore up the defense they need a number one goaltender you can't have three goaltenders um yeah. they, they need i'd like to see some size on the wing i'd like to see a little bit more grit on this team their best players are all small dylan lark is not a small guy but he's getting the, the snot beat out of him night after night after night keeps getting up off the mat and playing well like he has but uh, all the other players the brink it kane uh uh, uh, uh Lucas Raymond's not a great big guy. These guys are getting pounded every night. I'd like to see somebody in that roster that will make the opposing guys who want to stir it up a little bit just a little bit more honest, put their heads on a swivel a little bit and make sure they know who's on the ice. Those guys, Larkin and all the other guys I mentioned, need a little bit more space to get the job done night Keith. after night. Hey, Keith Braylon, it was glad to, have, glad to have you on the show. The reason why Dylan's so tough because he's a Michigan guy. We're just built for it. You're right about that. <laughs> We're built You're for right time. about that. Uh, no, I'm going to ask you a different question. The question is about the head man in charge, and that's Coach Lalonde. Uh, He made a couple comments last week. He made one after the loss to the Capitals, and he made another comment after the loss to the Penguins. And, you know, me and my estimation is kind of breaking the comments. Down. I didn't necessarily like how the comments landed. Is Coach Lalonde the right guy for the job as we move into this era where it seems like they're finding players. Lucas Raymond, he came on strong towards the end, 14 goals, 17 games. The resiliency is there. Patrick Kane, it looks like his leadership kind of right. helping out. It helps out Dylan Larkin. But is Lalone, is he the right guy for this squad? I don't know. I don't know. And, uh, you know, the one guy who, the only guy who uh, uh, can really answer that with any, with, with any power, I guess, is the general manager who hired him. Listen, yeah. let's keep in mind that this the, the coach Lalone it was a rookie coach when they hired him. He's learning on the job like a lot of these young kids that the the Wings are trying to bring up. The you know Siders, uh, uh, Lucas Raymond, Edvinsons, and so on. Uh, Lalone is going through this all this this really tight playoff race down the stretch for the very first time. You could bet your butt he's learning a lot too. Did, did he learn enough? Did he do enough to keep his job? Only Steve Eisman can answer that. But I don't know how you can fire him right now. Yeah. It's true. Hey, uh, Keith, uh, it's Mads. Thanks for coming on with us. We appreciate it, man. I you, wanted to ask you, you about the general manager, Steve Eiserman. What kind of job do you think he has done with this team up to this point? Do you think the rebuild has taken too long? There's a lot of people I read, and they're like, mm -hmm. hey, they did great last night, the last couple nights, but this, not, this should not have taken six years to get going. Well, let's keep in mind what a mess the franchise was when he took over, for one thing. It was, uh, he had a lot 
of, of ugly bookkeeping to take care of before he could be, even begin a re rebuild. It is taking a long time. I like a lot of the moves that he's made. Uh, listen, I'm a little bit frustrated. I got to sort of take my brethren in the Detroit media to uh, task a little bit uh, with the kid gloves that they uh, that they're they wear when they try and write about Steve Eisenman. Nobody right. wants to criticize him. They're afraid of losing access. You know what? What access? The guy <laughs> lives in a it. cave. Yeah. He never comes out. No. I, I, I wish I, I kind of wish I had the platform I had when I was at the free press because I look at for the, for the 15 years I was there, I never had a problem taking, uh, criticizing Steve Eisenman or Sergey Fedorov or Scotty Bowman, whoever. I think Steve Eisenman has opened himself up for a little bit of criticism. I'd like to see somebody, uh, you know, write about that or talk about that a little bit more. Uh, li listen, he's 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 spent a lot of money on free agents. Some of them worked out, some of them didn't over the last couple of summers. They left a lot of kids. It's, the, the Detroit's philosophy is draft and develop, draft and develop, right? Yeah. They've developed, they've had a lot of draft uh, picks. They've developed a lot of players in Grand Rapids, but we're not seeing them at a, at a, at a, at a uh, soon enough, I don't think. Correct. It, it used to be Detroit's, Detroit's policy was keep them in Grand Rapids till they're overripe and then bring them up. Well, you know what? They don't have the luxury to overripe these guys. If they can play, if they're close to playing, bring them up to the NHL and let them be a little on the job, on the job training as well. Um, I think that Steve Eiserman missed an opportunity at the trade deadline when when Dylan Larkin went down. He had, he had no number one center, no number two center. They got a bunch of number three centers. Mm -hmm. There were a couple of veteran number one centers available at the deadline uh, Kuznetsov in Washington uh, wound up being traded to, to uh, Carolina. And Thomas Hurdle in San Jose, who wound up being traded the de deadline to Las Vegas. Both of those guys were available. And, and you know, number one experienced NHL, n number one centers. Uh, and uh, they they went out elsewhere. Detroit could have used one of those guys. Kuznetsov especially. Keith, let me ask you this. Do you think that is the difference between a guy, a general manager who knows he's got all the time in the world and one yeah. who, hey, man, if I don't get in this year, I'm, I'm getting canned? A little bit of a lack of urgency? Is, is a deal like that, a deal like you're talking about, kind of one that allows somebody, you know what, I'm going to take my time here. I'm, I'm not getting fired this year. Well, that's what that's what he said when he took the job, right? I, you know, he plead, pleaded for patience. People have been pretty patient a long time, and and I think he's pretty comfortable there too. He knows he'll never get fired by the Illich family. Never. Uh, he's like a son to Marion Illich. Uh, he, they'd have to miss the playoffs another five years before he gets fired, and that's not going to happen either. But yeah, I think he's fairly comfortable. Uh, I I I think he's feeling you know a, a little bit of uh, what we're talking about today: social media impatience that's happening, which is good. Um, again, and I like to see um, the, the media uh, kind of light a little bit uh, of a fire and make him a little warmer. We were talking earlier, and Ryan brought this up: that goal by Perrin late to get this game tied with three seconds to go. First of oh. all, it was an amazing goal. Do you, where do you put that goal in Red Wing history? And I want you to just think about it. They, they lose that game, they're out. Later on, they found out they were out. But was that yeah. not one of the greatest goals in Red Wing history? Well, yeah, we saw three of them in two nights, guys. Three yep. of them. I mean, the two goals that, that uh, Lucas Raymond scored the night before were equally as important. Her on last night, uh, I put... I would put every one of those goals up against the uh, one that Steve Eisenman scored in double overtime against St. Louis to get to in a game seven to allow them to advance in 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 the playoffs. Um, everybody remembers that. Uh, oh yeah, that uh, uh, goal. But yeah, pretty darn important for sure. But the thing is, listen, they're playing a bottom feeder in the NHL in Montreal the last couple of games and they and Montreal took them to overtime. Detroit wins in regulation one or two of those nights. And they're in the playoffs. Question talking to Keith. That's all have to do. No doubt. Uh, Keith, he, he played general manager for a second. Where, where, who is out? Do you, just, is there a name that jumps off the page at you as an absolute target that the Red Wings have to go uh, get this off season? Uh, is that guy out there th this season? Do they have to make a huge splash uh, in free agency? Um, and do you think, Maybe even if, if the, the player isn't there, do you think Steve Eiserman, uh can't really just methodically 
build this roster anymore. You have to take a shot eventually. You have to take a shot. You have to yeah. maybe gamble yeah. on a guy here and and see if if you can move the needle that way. Well, you know, we've had the, the goalie carousel since Steve Eisman has come to town. All sorts of different names, guys with some uh, rather limited uh, uh, NHL experience. I think they if it it starts in goal, right? We all agree on that. I yes. really think that 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 um, they need to go out and find a legit number one experienced goaltender, a guy like Jacob Markstrom in Calgary, who will be a free agent and will will be available. I'm I'm pretty darn sure. I would make a run at that guy, uh, and it, it, it starts there. You got to get a goaltender, and then start working on your defense, and then start working on your, uh, you know, a little bit of grit and size on the wing, and so on. But uh, uh, that's where they have to start, I think. Remiss if we didn't ask you before you, we let you get out of here about obviously the Russian Five was a, a great time here in Detroit. It was amazing what you did with that, and Vlad the Impaler. We love Vladdy. Tell us about Vladdy, his health, what's going on, and just bring us up to date a little bit. Yeah, I've I had a chance to see Vladdy uh, probably a half dozen times over the last uh, six or nine months or so. Every time I see him, I don't know how, you know, 25, how, for 26 years later, uh, whatever, the, the progress that he's making, even in the last year or so that I've seen him, uh, continues to amaze me. Um, you know, He's he's doing okay. He I, when I see him, he's in a wheelchair, but he can get around on a walker. Every every time I see him, he reaches out, shakes my hand with as strong a grip as the Man. night that he won the Stanley wow. Cup. And he's hi Keats, hi Keats. You know how you doing? I can speak to him. <laughs> a few words, a few words in Russian. He goes da da da. You know, a few words in English. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, he does doesn't speak a whole lot. He understands what we're 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 uh, what we're saying, and uh, he knows what he wants. And more important, guys, he knows who he is. He knows his place in Detroit Red Wings history. When he's around uh, Little Caesars Arena or uh, Joe Louis Arena back in, in the day, uh, he could walk in the dressing room and know his place in that room, which I think is really, really important. Uh, it, he can't remember what he had for lunch. <laughs> it, it, he can has I. no short-term he's memory. Not the only yeah, one. A lot of us are that way, there, right? But he's, you know, guys, he's doing really, really well, and uh, awesome. um, it's 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 good to see because he is a treasure among athletes in, in Detroit sports history. Keith, you're absolutely correct. Uh, you know, just quick quick story. Like, I grew up loving the Red Wings, man. I tell you, I tell Maz all the time, when they got swept by the Devils, I cried. Like, that's how <laughs> long and how serious I am about the Red Wings. But I got a chance to yeah. meet Vladdy for the very first time. Actually, it was, it was the Red Wings' last game before COVID. They played the Blackhawks on March mm -hmm. 7th of 2020. I got a chance to meet him at, like you said, shook his hand, and it was Ox, I'm talking about an ox handshake, but yeah. from then yeah. it still was, but not necessarily a lot of talking and not a lot of movement. He was sitting in his chair and he was, you know, eyes focused. Fast mm -hmm. forward to October of last year, I had a chance to hang out with him at Top Golf and his, uh, his I believe it's his daughter that takes care of him or his uh, caretaker. Anastasia, and yes. 100%. And he was more interactive. We started talking about Uno, which I, I know is his favorite game. Yeah. So we talked about yeah. Uno and he lit up, but it was very different than 2020. And I was just so happy to see it. He's definitely making strides. And it was amazing to see, like you said, some 26 years later for me, just three years later. I'll tell you what, Braylon, that guy could have played football at Michigan. Yes, he could have. Yes, he could have. He could have. Hey, Keith, last thing for you. Uh, yeah. Take me back and uh, let's re rewrite history. If Vladdy got, you know, if he, if nothing happened to Vladdy and, and Sergei Manatsakhanov, what what, what, right. what else can this team have done, do you think? Well, uh, three things. They would have won a, another Stanley Cup or two. In, in his in his prime, he was yep. just emerging yes. as one of the NHL's best defensemen. He finished second in the Norris Trophy yep. trophy balloting as the best defenseman in the league in 1997. Uh, they they they, they would have won a little bit more, and uh, he would have won some Norris trophies that Nick Lindstrom probably would. Huh. Nick wouldn't have won seven oh, Norris trophies. Vladdy would have won a couple of those, or they would have split votes, and somebody else would have won. Jeez. And, wow. and 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 thirdly, thirdly, when his career was over, he would be in the Hall of Fame today. Amen. Incredible stuff, Amen. Keith. We can't thank you enough for your time, your perspective. We really appreciate it. And if you have not uh, gotten your copy of the Russian Five or Vlad the Impaler uh, yet, anywhere books are sold, you could do that. Former freak writer uh, Keith Gave. Thanks so much, Always Keith. We appreciate you, you nice, buddy. Keith. Thank you, guys. My pleasure.
All you right, got buddy. it. Uh, it's so great to talk Red Wings hockey. Yeah. I wish we were still talking a little bit of hockey for sure. Man, but uh, my goodness, great. what are you going to be doing? Man, that would have been great. He gave us. He gave me a copy of that book when he uh, did the um, the uh, the night with Darren and uh, Unrivaled and uh, yeah, Claude. Yep. Unrivaled gave me a run. So I tell you, I'm ready to real. I'm ready to run that that thing back tonight. I'm ready to go watch Unrivaled. Unrivaled. Yeah. I am ready. I just finished OJ mm-hmm. for the for the third time. I watched OJ, and it took me five nights to get through the five yeah. parts, two hours each one. It's crazy. I swear, man. Uh, every time I watch this, this time it really hit me mm-hmm. that this guy was literally two different people. <laughs> two different people. Oh I don't my know God. how the hell did that happen. Man. How the hell did that man, who was one of the greatest football players of all time, Turn into that freaking crazy man, and then he goes and screws himself in Las Vegas, stealing his own stuff back. What a story! OJ had Un- more access than Michael Jordan. It's and, unbelievable, man. And we want to thank Tom Mazaway for today's random thought. Coming up next, <laughs> it is up. a little NBA, little NBA. Oh, talk. Well, let's get to where we go, Batman. Oh man, I want to apologize. Yep. Well, you, a hey. couple people calling you out in the chat for that. Oh. Actually, Darvin Ham addressed that situation uh, after the game. We'll talk about that. But first, a message from the uh, 313 Draft Party, Tom Mazzaway. Oh, it's coming, folks. It's next Thursday and Friday. Let's go, baby. April 25th and 26th. Join the entire Woodward Sports family. We broadcasted the first three rounds right there of the NFL Draft. We're going to be downtown. Listen where we're going to be. The corner of Woodward and Adams at the 313 Draft Party presented by Figer Law. All we do is win 21 and over free for everyone party starts at 2 thursday and the live draft coverage begins at 8 p.m we hope to see you downtown at the 313 draft party special thanks to sorokis and glorious while the world watches detroit we will show the world how detroit parties at the 313 draft party we'll see you next thursday Maz, I love that glorious. You know what else is glorious? And that's Planet Fitness in there. Fitness is essential campaign. Look, your fitness is essential. That's why you got to get in shape. That's why your boy has been working double overtime. Oh, look at that. But also, it's only $10 a month, so they make it very affordable and make it very easy for you to come down and get a great workout in. They also have the 30-minute workout cycle, so you don't even have to come in with a plan because they got the plan for you. And they also feature the squeaky clean gym. A lot of gyms have a lot of things, but they're not necessarily clean. Planet Fitness isn't only clean, it's squeaky clean. And it's home of the judgment-free zone as well. So come to Planet Fitness. Your fitness is essential. And it's still only $10 a month. Thank you to the Detroit Lions and Sheila Hamm for the best season in Lions history. Now it's time to let Brad Holmes cook. Woodward Sports. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. The most talked about Detroit media by other Detroit media, and we love it. It's the Woodward Sports Network. Any Lady Jane's haircuts for men and claim your throne for a king's treatment from one of our talented stylists. Open seven days a week, walk in anytime. Just get to a Lady Jane's today and receive a precision haircut, scalp massage, hot lather neck shave, and a hot towel treatment. A haircut should not be a chore, it should be an experience. And that's exactly what Lady Jane's has to offer. Open seven days a week, walk ins are always welcome. There's always a location near you. Lady Jane's haircuts for men, it's wicked awesome. A network for the city, by the city. Woodward Sports is Detroit Sports. Blake. Hey guys, what's good, good man? You How you doing? What you got for me today? Let's have a look, man. I see the one I want right there. That's the one I'm looking for. Welcome to the winner circle, Blake. Hey. Figer Law. All we do is win. All we do is win. Congratulations to the real coach of the year, Motor City Dan Campbell. Just put your head down and go to work. It's about to be fun, man. It's about to be fun. Woodward Sports. Shake Shack and Woodward want to remind you that football season is all year long, and now... 
Chase Shack is allowing you the chance to win two tickets for Detroit's home opening. That is right, the Kings in the North, the Detroit Lions. Wherever they open up against, you have the opportunity to be there. You and a friend, spouse, girlfriend, doesn't matter. You can be in attendance. All you gotta do is scan the QR code that's on the, it's on the screen right now. It's literally above my head right now. Scan that QR code or go down to Shake Shack, get yourself a chicken shack sandwich with some of those crinkle fries and then register that way. It's the best way to do it. Look, QB Challenge, Shake Shack, Wilbur Sports. Come on, that's a great combo. After an accident, people need to hire a lawyer more than any other time. So make Figer Law your first call. 1-800-A-WINNER. 1-800-A-WINNER. The team of trial lawyers will get you the money you deserve. It's Figer Law. All we do is win. Tom Masway, the people want an apology. Uh, uh -oh. I wish I could pay them back. They I, want I'm broke. an apology. I'm sorry. After yesterday, Tom Masway said that the New Orleans Pelicans were a lock. Fly Pelicans. Uh, to they, beat the Los did. Angeles you Lakers. You talked me into it. Well, that was y'all too. Here's the problem. Out of it. Okay, here's the problem. They would have. If, if Zion, Zion got there. hurt with three minutes to go in the game. You think? Yes. He. Had 40 points. I know. He was absolutely dominating that game. Anthony Davis couldn't do diddly poo against Zion Williamson, and he leaves the game late in the fourth quarter. And down the stretch, where do you go? The Lakers, they went to LeBron. Who did the Pelicans go to? Yeah. They needed Zion Williamson on the floor. Um, a big three by uh, D'Angelo Russell late. Really kind of sealed it. It was tied at 101. And then the three uh, for Russell in an incredible shot. Uh, if Zion Williamson is on the floor, they win that game. I would be steadfast in that belief. He was absolutely doing anything he wanted. Let, 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 let me give you some uh, some help in, in, in this uh, conversation, Ryan Armani. I was one that didn't say anything necessarily about the, the Lakers and they're going to try to lose. I understood the concept behind it. But I was like, hey, we'll see what happens. Ryan, you're right. And you know why you're right? Because I watched that game. You know who I specifically watched? I watched Anthony Davis yesterday. Anthony Davis wasn't doing diddly squat the whole mm -hmm. game. I'm talking about nothing. He wasn't getting rebounds. He wasn't even trying to get the ball in the post. He wasn't trying to score. Wasn't trying to run with the transition. When they got out in the open, Anthony Davis was nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. Didn't play anything until the end. At the end, he scored a couple garbage points. He wasn't playing like he wanted to win. He was on the court. LeBron James, same thing. He made some baskets early. You know, he made a couple. He had 23 points. But at the end of the day, they were trying to organically. Remember we used to use that term? Mm -hmm. Organically tank. They wanted to lose last night. And if you really watch that game, they really want to lose. But you know what also happened? Not only did Zion get hurt, where the hell was C.J. McCollum? Mr. Experience, the guy that they went and got from Portland because he had experience. He's played in a Western Conference He's final. got experience He's in losing. Definitely experienced in losing. He didn't show up last night. You know who else didn't show up? Also got benched in the fourth quarter. Brandon, Brandon Ingram. Brandon Ingram. Where the heck was Brandon Ingram? This is a guy that can play. This is at one point a guy that they said, this is the next K. Well, not K. This is a KD-like type player. Where was he at last night? He got benched. So the Lakers tried. Ryan Armani masked to give that game away, but the Pelicans helped them not give it away. Zion Williamson uh, hit a bucket with a 319 to go in the game. It tied the game at 95. Yeah. You play even the final yeah. three minutes of the game they without your best They went by five. Yeah. You know, um, but that sucks, though. That su it sucks. It does. It's the game. It is, and now it their treat for winning that game is a rematch with the world champion Denver Nuggets. Who swept them out of the playoffs last year, who won every game this year. The Lakers have lost the last eight games yeah. to the Denver Nuggets. Darvin Ham was asked after the game if he heard all of the talk surrounding the fact that they should lose this game against the Pelicans. He thought that uh, that was talk from people coming out of insane asylums. Yeah. Uh, Greeny was also one of the guys that suggested um, that they lose because you got to play the percentages. And, and I know, like Anthony Davis said after the game too, um, that a long time ago, his old coach, Monty Williams, oh, of man. all people, said uh, when you mess with the game, the game messes with you. Uh, so, so don't cheat the game. So don't cheat the game. Then why does he cheat the game? Because every second game of the playoffs, he has nothing. He does nothing. He takes games off. Like 100%. Darvin Ham can say that. And I agree with Darvin Ham. We saw Darvin Ham on the going to work Pistons. We know what type of player he is. Look, he's from right up the street. 
He's from Saginaw, I do mm-hmm. believe. He's from right down the street. He's a go hard, intensity, intense type guy. But maybe your players aren't representative of what you're trying to do. Because we've seen basketball players, especially Anthony Davis, especially LeBron when he wants to, they mail it in at times, even in the playoffs, sometimes just to get back to whatever arena they're at, whatever home base they have, just to get there so they can close out games there. So don't give me that. They they don't always give up, or they don't give up games, or they don't you know play just a little bit sometimes just to make it through and whatever. They definitely do. And last night they just caught a break because there was no C.J. McCollum, there was no Brandon Grant. I mean, um, uh, uh, Ingram. Brandon Ingram. There was none of that, and then Zion Williamson got hurt. I agree with you guys. I didn't yesterday, but I do agree with you. Nobody wants to play Jokic, right? And Porter and Gordon. Even one of the former Pistons players, Casey Caldwell Pope, nobody wants to play those guys. They didn't either, they, but they will now. Do you think the Nuggets would rather play the Lakers? Yes. They own the Lakers. And um, here, here, if you're an NBA but fan. But such a thing as, hey, we owned them, but they're still LeBron and those guys let me tell you, coming after us. Let me tell you, this is, the, the, the game is a matchup game. It's a, the Denver Nuggets are a matchup nightmare for the Los Angeles Lakers. I believe the Lakers are the second best team in the Western Conference. That's what sucks about this. If you're an NBA fan, if you enjoy basketball, if you enjoy superstars, you don't want to see this matchup because you want to see LeBron, I think, anyway, in the playoffs for a number of weeks. Yeah. And now LeBron James is going to be bounced in five games. The, the Lakers are playing better or as good as anybody in the game right now. They won 14 of the last 19. The Lakers might win a game. One. So they are better. Yeah. They are better than they were a year ago. They are the second best team in the conference, I think. But Denver is so much better than them in terms of matchup. It's not going to be a sweep this year. It'll be 4-1. Well, I'm, the problem is that's the uh, West in general. I'm not short, man. That's why you should have lost the game last night. I, I give you LeBron's experience. I don't trust AD. I still don't trust Austin Reeves. I, Rui Hachimura, I do trust him. He's always giving you 15. He's always giving you, you know, six rebounds off the bench. I just don't trust him against the best teams. When you say best teams, we know who's number one. It's Denver. I'm coming. Minnesota is right there for the OKC. I understand that they're young. SGA is a different type of player, man. And the way that they've been playing this season, there's a reason why they are the number one seed in the NBA. It's just a matter of can they turn it up in the playoffs. I'm with you on the Suns. I don't trust the Suns as far as I can throw mm-hmm. them. Just because you put great players with other great players doesn't mean they mesh well. But I don't know, man. I, it, it, they got tired last year. When they made that deep run, they got to the Western Conference Finals, and they met up with Jokic. They really didn't have a lot to offer at that point. They were already spent, but... I just don't know if they had enough to offer now. Because as good as they were going on that 14-game uh, win streak out of 19, I want to say, they still didn't move up, Ryan, in the West. That's how stacked the West is. For every game they were winning, Minnesota was winning. OKC was winning. Denver was winning. So I don't even know, even if they beat eh, – there's no way they beat the Nuggets. I agree. I don't know about that. But we'll, we'll see how it plays because eventually water is going to find its level. And not you can't always beat a team – Consistently, and we'll talk about the next series, which is going to be the Kings. Uh, you know, right now, I had an if bet last night. I, I bet myself. I did it. I had the How Pelicans. You bet yourself? I had the Pelicans. In other words, I, I followed my own advice. Okay, I got you. I bet the Pelicans to win mm-hmm. on the money line. And I had an if bet on the Kings. Yep. Because you, you said the dubs are done, done. And I couldn't agree with you more. Yep. And we'll get to that game in a minute, oh. man. But... <laughs> Uh, that's what sucked. Mm. That's what sucks because you don't get. I don't get that second bet because my first bet didn't come in, and <laughs> I'm just not gambling like I used to. It's all, I'm just taking it easy. Good but, for you. But when a team faces a team and you beat them four or five straight times, and we'll talk about this because the Kings own the Pelicans. They own them, mm. and the Kings face the Pelicans next. Fly Pelican. And maybe you don't they even beat know them five if out of five. Zion Williamson. And, I know. You know, and they've beaten them five out of five. But the sixth time, how hard is it to beat a team six times? That's why I'm giving the Lakers an outside shot here. A puncher's chance. Better than a puncher's chance. And I don't want them to win. Here's the difference between what you're talking about with Denver and L.A. and New Orleans and Sacramento. Yeah. Sacramento's like the the Super Bowl. That's a one-game playoff. Yeah. Okay? So could New Orleans beat Sacramento? Yes. One game, absolutely they move on. 
could L.A. beat Denver four times in seven nights? No. Okay. That's a that's a big yeah. difference. Okay. It is, and that's why there's a difference between, you know, like basketball playoffs versus, like, college basketball. Mm. All you got to beat a team is once. Yeah. You go on the court, oh, it's one time. One shining moment versus, all right, I beat the team. Now can I beat them again? Right. Now can I beat right. them in their house? Now can I face the road, come back home? Can we stay on? Like, that's why LeBron – Win so many series in his career. Give, give LeBron some credit for a moment. LeBron has been so experienced. He's been in the playoffs so long. He's done it at the highest level, the most elite level. You get LeBron in the seven game. Thank you, NBA, for making everything a seven game series. Yeah. That's the money. I want you, to talk about that. You get LeBron in the seven game series. His experience, Ryan, as you called it, it's going to beat a lot of teams, a lot of kids, a lot of individuals that just, they don't have it. He's been doing this for a very long yeah. time. Seven games is tough. He Great just doesn't. Point. He when just was, doesn't have the the cast, if you will. Back in my day, NBA was best of five the first two rounds, best of seven the last two rounds. Hockey was best of three, best of five, and then two best of sevens. I give me the best of five series in this opening round of the NBA any day of the week. There's no reason that this should be a best of seven first round series. A one versus an eight, a two versus a seven. Give me a best of five on those because you have a better puncher's chance to win three games than you do four. You just talk about the difference between March Madness and the NBA playoffs. Oakland plays Kentucky in a seven-game series. Yes. How many more games do they win? None. 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 They no. might steal one more. Nah. Maybe. 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 So. I, I, think as an, I think as an elite program, you, John Calipari knows enough to make adjustments where they're not going to let Oakland win another game. Right. I mean, I got to get – even though I don't tackle, like John Calipari – they're going to tackle him. True. It, yeah. And it, it, that runs out. Like, that hot streak runs out. Ask Clay Thompson about that hot streak. That hot streak runs out. Hey, let's get to the uh, other game last night. Was it, there another game last night? Hold on. It, Is there a better home court advantage no. in sports than the Sacramento Kings have? Yeah, it used to be the Warriors. Not anymore. <laughs> well, you, it's those smaller cities. I think Memphis, when they had um, – John Morant was going yeah, before he got in trouble. Absolutely. A couple of years ago, Memphis is a really good one. But that barn in Buffalo, Sacramento – playing the Bills. Yeah, that, yeah, that barn in Sacramento is unlike anything that we see. Yeah. You're, you're right on top of the action. and um, The owner's sitting right there at, at – the owner – is sitting right there. Vladdy sitting down there. Vla yes. Vladdy Divots. Isn't that something? Um, I, yeah, Golden State to me is done unless. No, no, they're done. No. Unless. Unless. I could see LeBron going to Golden State after a summer with uh, Steph Curry in the uh, Team USA. Okay. Uh, I could see. Is his contract up? Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See a guy like Paul George. Ooh. Go to locker rooms. To uh Dubs. The Dubs. If if there's a first round exit by the Clippers, you know, you've got Kawhi, Paul George, Russell Westbrook. Yeah. Um what, so what what about Damian Lillard? Damian Lillard, I, I, I think Milwaukee is losing in they the are. first round. And that's why I asked you a question. Damian Lillard just doesn't look and I don't know who said this. Somebody in the NBA circles, maybe it was Stephen A. Smith. Okay. That Dame is playing out of his mind, but he is so unhappy playing in Milwaukee. And nothing against Milwaukee. He's just a West Coast guy. Like, if, if you're an East Coast guy, it's real hard to go play in the Pacific Northwest. If you're a Pacific yeah. Northwest guy, it's real hard to go play in the Midwest. You what? know what I mean? Uh, it's just... What all that money who gives it? You're out of sorts. I... I I, I do understand it. Also, too, it's very similar to the Monty Williams situation. When your family isn't right, you're not right. Look, I know some people. Oh, that that's know, a fact. I know some people that know Dame personally. Dame's going through that divorce right now. He's oh. going through that divorce. His well, soon-to-be ex-wife and kids, they live in Portland. Okay. He lives in Milwaukee. He's lonely on the that's court. That's a different story. He's, he's lonely on the court. He's lonely off the court. Like He's just not in a good space. And it's mixing with Giannis, who... We were ready to crown Giannis the next thing four mm -hmm. years ago when they won the championship. He scored 50 to win the, to win the title mm -hmm. in game seven. People forget the Suns were up two games to none. They came back, won that series. He wins MVP. He wins defensive MVP the year before that. The year before that, we're ready to crown him. Giannis has got bounced in the, in the first round last year. 
Giannis was a one seed, lost to an AC two years ago with Jimmy Butler. Giannis is on the chopping block, ladies and gentlemen. I don't care about the regular season. I don't care about 30 games and mm -hmm. 60% from hill goal range. But what happens in the playoff? You mix that with Dame Lillard. I'm not sure Giannis isn't out of Milwaukee next year. And just to speak to that. Or in two years. Okay, so they get bounced in the first round last year. What do you do? You go get, get the Lillard. best available player in the league yeah. to that, that is fire, available. Fire your coach, first of all. Yeah, you <laughs> fire your coach. Then you get Dame. Then you get Doc Rivers. I mean, at some point. I mean, their coach was doing fine at the beginning of this year. There was no he had a winning record. They and weren't they went playing and got Doc. They weren't Doc, playing Doc don't win in the playoffs. They weren't playing defense. At the end of the day, like You know, you know. You Giannis wanted I mean? them gone. Right, you know. Giannis wanted them gone. At the end of the day, when you get the we've seen it time and time again with somebody you don't like, we're talking about. LeBron James. How many coaches has LeBron oh gotten bounced? Of course. Like when you're that power, where you're that player, you it's part it comes with the responsibility. Hey, look. You win a championship, you win MVPs, you win defensive player year. You have the right to have a say. But sometimes when you make those moves, when you make the, hey, look, I, I can't play under this guy anymore. You got to give me somebody else. He just he doesn't speak to the to the temperature in the locker room anymore. If it doesn't work, now we're not looking at the owner. We're necessarily we're looking at Giannis. A couple of games tonight in the 7-8 game, the Miami the Heat. East. Yep, in the Miami Heat at the Philadelphia 76ers in the 9-10 game, the Hawks and Bulls. Maz, do you have any locks of the night tonight? Uh, not yet, but by the end of the show, I will. I'll give you one. Go Philly's going to win. Sixers. Yes. Sixers are home. Six, Sixers by double digits. Yeah, I agree. This is they may have win by Sixers are laying four and yep. a half. Si everybody's talking about Miami. Miami ain't that Miami. This, not the same this, team. This is not that Miami team. How about the Bulls? Their favorite? I got I, nothing I, on that. I don't think the Bulls are that good. I got nothing on that I can't game. even tell you who plays for the Bulls. Joel, Joel Embiid. The only reason I say this is because Joel Embiid is – the second most dominant player, I think, in the N Next to NBA, only behind uh, Jokic. Yeah, he had and, and people forget how good that team was with him. He's back mm -hmm. now. He's fully healthy. Uh, Sixers are going to win by double Sixers digits are, tonight. Okay. Sixers are 32-8 and eight with mm -hmm. Giannis in the roster. Mm -hmm. And he's looking to hey, – this is his year. This is his year because everybody's so healthy. Joel, you mean. Uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, Joel and B, the 32-8 and eight when he's in the, uh, in, the lot, in the roster, in the lineup. Everybody's talking about the Celtics. Everybody's just gifting the Celtics to, to the finals. They're gifting the whole their team. Oh, this team reminds me of this. Jason Taylor, they're, they're a team that chokes as well, and I think Joel Embiid, he may be too much for them this I time around. I picked the Celtics last year. year. When they lost, I'm like, that's, they're nah. winning the NBA championship next year. I don't want them to, but I really still heavily favored the Celtics to win it all. No doubt. Um, you got to show me. Big NBA news today. Yep. Remember, we talked about Jonte Porter of the Toronto Raptors. And betting the on himself, literally. He, yep. in, uh, there were a couple of instances with some betting irregularities. Well, the NBA today finished their, their investigation into him and have, has banned him from the NBA for life. Wow. For violating the league's gaming rules. Um, in fact, a couple of instances, he had parlays involving Toronto to lose. Yep. <laughs> what do you think his teammates want to do to him? You know, I even, I mean, I even think of his brother, Michael Porter, yeah. who's yeah. a really it's good champion. player. He's a world champion for the Denver Nuggets, and he did it the did what it the a right shame, way. Man. You know, I mean, just you you're, you've disgraced yeah. everybody that you've disgraced yourself, you've disgraced your family, you've disgraced your team, the league. And for what this guy's a two way player, yeah. Like, for a cup, like, you couldn't have made explain to people to the people that don't really know how he bet against himself. So, prop bets, prop bets, prop bets are will John, my favorite. Pro, Braylon loves how, the prop. Bets. I almost hit that yeah. one last night. Will, will Braylon Edwards have three or more catches in tonight's Monday night football matchup? What? That's every that's every night, okay. Well, you could bet exclusively on that that wouldn't be the result of the game is not affected. Just yeah. will Braylon catch three or more balls? This is true. Jante Porter would be his, his – would he be over under five, five rebounds. points? Five points, three rebounds. The, the well, minute he got close. All of the bets on two specific occasions were on the under that Jante Porter would score less than five points against the – 
The Pistons. The Pistons. Let's just right. for yeah. example. Probably scored 20. In both of those games, um, John T. Porter took himself out of the game. Yep. Had an illness in one game and then an eye injury in the other. First three minutes of the game. Unreal. Dude. Biggest biggest wagers in the sports book that night were on that. There was a million dollar wager that yeah. they sniffed out that would have cashed, but they froze it. They froze that bet. He did a lot of damage, this guy. He did a lot of damage too. And you know, there's there's two sides of the coin. You know, we have looked at a Jamin Jameson Williams situation. You looked at a couple coaches in the NFL that were getting pop. Uh, this is when the NFL, this is when the NBA not necessarily very kind of direct on what the rules are, what the circumstances are, explaining it in its full detail. So you give some guys grace. Hey, Jameson Williams, look at that. ah, you know, we understand it's dumb what the NFL is doing. But not this, right? Like this is this is crazy. This is this is idiotic. Like you know, you've seen people get in trouble over the last three years as it relates to betting. Players betting on games, coaches betting on games. And not only are you betting on games, you're betting against yourself. You're taking yourself out of games. Which also is interesting because it lets you know that in the NBA, these talking, if they want to come out of a game, I, I got poked in the eye. I don't want to play anymore. They will do that. It is the league, I think, that is most capable of corruption. Yeah. Always has been. Steve Javi. One player. Not Steve Javi. Not Steve Javi. You're killing uh, Steve Javi? Not Steve uh, Javi. You know what I'm talking uh, about. It's Donna, Donahoe. Uh, Tim Donahue. Tim Donahue. 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 Yeah. Um, I think the NBA as a sport is – the most available sport to affect one player can change and alter the result of that game, yeah. unlike any other sport. I think how sports starts is, is ultimately what it still has the capacity to be, and that's kind of what basketball was. Basketball always was to the highest bidder. Eventually, Daniel Stern, take, David Stern takes over. David Stern was out here willing and dealing, mafioso style. Like It's always been kind of a... Like a mafioso style deal, can't knocking this trade, letting this trade go through, letting this guy get off, not letting this guy go through. David Stern and NBA have been running that way for a very long time. And Adam Silver, he's just next up, following those. This is what stuff. you get, folks, when sports allowed the mob into their game. They let gambling into their game, and this is what you're going to get from now on. It's it was bad back then. Illegal betting. Look what the Shohei thing is. Let me tell you something. What's up? And so Sho 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 he didn't do it. Yeah, Sho he didn't. He didn't do it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, he didn't do it. He had no <laughs> I idea. I needed an interpreter yeah, too. Yeah. Let me just say, so, if you really believe that Shohei Otani had Raise no freaking idea what was going on, he didn't know. Uh, I got some swamp land for you in Jersey, <laughs> and there's a lot of it, but I'll find you some. But gambling <laughs> and sports, it always worked, right? It was yeah. always in it. Dad told me. Hey, this is all a Broadway show, Boxing Tommy. Will you tell the people it's, your uh, Franco Harris dad story, too, by the way? I've done it, but I'll I do it again. I'll hear it again. The Immaculate Reception, December 23rd of 72, the birth of the Pittsburgh Steelers. The winner equinox. Raiders are going to go and win this playoff game. Steelers are going to try to win their first playoff game since the, the 40s. And Franco Harris gets the Immaculate Reception. Of course, it bounced off Frenchie Fuqua, his hands first, but they said, okay, to hell with that. They let him score. <laughs> and then Art McNally is the uh, head referee, goes into the dugout because it was at Three Rivers. Explain the Frankie Fuqua part. Like, Frankie so, Fuqua, you can't – offense to offense, you can't – it's a, it's it's an illegal play. It's a t if an offensive player tips the ball into another offensive player's right. hands, it is not on catch. So explain the Hail Mary. Hail Mary is this a, it's a tip ball. It's a tip to another yeah. player. Yeah. As long as if it's offense to not offense, you're good. Offense to offense. I'm like, like part of when we do the Hail Mary yeah. is we're trying to tip it to a teammate. Right. Or t so what happens if I tip it? To one of your teammates? Yes. Incomplete. No. Yes. It doesn't happen then in the Then maybe they changed the rules that's since 1972. So that's why whenever you say that, I'm like, that's the NFL. That's what the well, Hail Mary The rule is. in 72 was no two offensive players okay, could tip the ball. They changed so that rule. So Franco scores. My dad's sitting on the couch <laughs> on his chair in his white V-neck T-shirt. I'm sitting on the opposite end of the room. My mom's just walking in the door with shopping bags because it's Christmas Day, Christmas Eve Eve. And my dad's face could turn completely white. Dad, it, it don't count. Don't worry. It's not going to count. There's no way. That counts. I love this. Love and McNally goes, calls upstairs. He's like, do I have any security? Because there was no instant replay back there. No, there's no security. Okay, it's a touchdown. 
It's a touchdown. And they got the F out of Dodge. And they oh got the God. hell out of Three Rivers. No one wanted to go against Franco's Italian <laughs> Army. No one wanted a piece of that. Italian and Army. that's how it all began. And my poor dad, I don't know how much he lost, but uh, you know, we still did okay for Christmas, but I'm sure he's still in hock to this day, and he's 96 and a half <laughs> years old. I thought your mom took back the gifts that day and walked right back nope. out the door. Nope, I guess my mom, <laughs> my mom was used to it because every time dad and I would come back from the racetrack, how'd you guys do? <laughs> We broke even. <laughs> <laughs> we broke even. Oh, okay. God. Good night, Mom. It's so great. I love it. <laughs> Learning at a young age. Oh, You're God. Uh, guys, we'll take a break. When we come back, we're going to join, be joined by Russell Brown. We're going to be t- – uh, Brandon Brown. I'm sorry. We uh, we talked to uh, Russell, Russell yesterday. yesterday. Brandon we talked Brown. to Russell yesterday about the draft. We talked to Brandon Brown. About those Michigan Wolverines, big spring game on Saturday at the Big House. Game is on Fox 2, by the way, locally here in Detroit. Um, But first, a message from us here at WSN. Head over to shop.woodwardsports.com and get yourself some of the latest Detroit sports wearables, including that awesome Campbell and Holmes you know, election style shirt there. That is an absolutely wonderful shirt. We got the new Tigers and the Welcome to Detroit tee as well. So get yourself the latest hats, tees, and hoodies that are guaranteed to turn heads at shop.woodwardsports.com. Maz. All right, you want to get your pet the best. Do not settle for less. It's Premier Pet Supply, hands down Michigan's best pet store. They're family owned and operated for over 30 years. That's great. 13 Metro Detroit locations. Of course, you can click on their code at any time. 60 brands of food, over 60 brands of food at the lowest prices available. And of course, curbside delivery if you need it. They have nutritionists on call for any questions you have about your pet. Don't settle for less, give your pet the best. It's PremierPetSupply.com. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. VGCSM 3C Sports Conference is coming during NFL Draft Week, starting on April 24th. Special guests will include Jerome Bettis, Barry Sanders, Eddie George, Aleem McNeil, Calvin Johnson Jr., Sean H. Wilson, Cynthia Freeland, Adam Scheffner, and more. This event is open to athletes, coaches, and parents, but space is limited. So go to our website and purchase your tickets today at www.bgcsm.org. Caught! Touchdown! Thank you to the Detroit Lions and Sheila Hamm for the best season in Lions history. Now it's time to let Brad Holmes cook. Woodward Sports. To any Lady Jane's haircuts for men and claim your throne for a king's treatment from one of our talented stylists. Open seven days a week, walk in anytime. Just get to a Lady Jane's today and receive a precision haircut, scalp massage, hot lather neck shave, and a hot towel treatment. A haircut should not be a chore, it should be an experience. And that's exactly what Lady Jane's has to offer. Open seven days a week, walk ins are always welcome. There's always a location near you. Lady Jane's haircuts for men, it's wicked awesome. Is that an octopus in your pants, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> you should see what I did there. Go Red Wings from Octopi Experts Woodward Sports. Tell you about Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac Buick GMC. That's right, what happens when you run a great business for over 50 years? You expand. That's what Les Stanford did by adding the Les Stanford Buick GMC brands. This dealership located in Ferndale on Woodward Avenue, just south of Nine Mile. And if you're looking for a Chevy or a Cadillac, Les Stanford in Dearborn, where they have been on Michigan Avenue for over 55 years. You can find the brand you want. All four GM brands, Chevy, Cadillac, Buick, GMC, under one umbrella. LesStanford.com, LesStanford.com. Together, let's drive. And you can drive on over to Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Awesome is when a guy can be a guy and get an amazing haircut. That's Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Stop in, sit back, relax. Let one of Lady Jane's talented stylists make you look and feel great. Walk in anytime, seven days a week. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. Speaking of talented stylists, Ryan and Armani, my hair is not long enough where I can get it braided. When I got my hair washed last week... Oh, got to get it washed out. Uh, Mariah, she was able to help me out, hook me up. Uh, she told me she braided hair. So today, Ryan, Maz, I'm getting my hair braided 
right after the show here at Lady Jane's. So they do a little bit of everything. Kind of excited. I love that. That's Kinda pretty excited. darn good stuff, yeah. isn't it? You're going to be looking good for the draft. 100%. So I'll take it out by the draft, but uh, I'll get some more put in. What are your responsibilities draft week? Because you're doing some NFL alumni events, right? Uh, shoot, I got an event tomorrow at the DAC, kind of some draft format. Now, the draft. Fox 2 weather people say you're going to be involved in something, too. Is that true? I did. I, you, you set me up. You set me up with uh, Langford as well as uh, Derek Kevin. Long Street. So Long Street. Long Excuse Street. Me. Same uh, thing. M2. We'll Not necessarily. Long Drink. There you go. <laughs> right. No, but Long Street right. and uh, Kevin, hanging out with those guys. 1130, I'm going to go out there, and it's legitimately the uh, draft experience, the combine type deal. We got the combine. It's going to be a lot of fun. They got me setting up, speaking with individuals, hanging out. Maybe I'll run the 40. Maybe oh. I won't. I'm not running no 40, man, unless you pay me. But <laughs> it, it will be fun. It, I think it's right at Hearts Plaza. You, you know what you need to do? Tell me what I need to do, Ryan Armani. Hold the clock. <laughs> See, thank you. That, that's my job. That's hold my the job. Clock. Catch a couple passes and hold the clock. Absolutely. But, you can catch some passes. Hold the clock. I'm excited. I just want to be hamstring. I just want to be around, man. Downtown. <laughs> like I'm doing the draft for the Jets, man. I'm doing a couple draft parties Friday and uh, Thursday. Thursday's a mixing event. Got my parents on the list to actually be in the green room for uh, Thursday and Friday. I'm like, remember this? Oh, man, that's so exciting. 20 years ago, we were doing the same thing. So I think it'll be fun for the parents. That's awesome, dude. Uh, looking forward to that. Hey, let's go to the phone lines now and bring in Brandon Brown, uh, publisher is. of Wolverine Digest, uh, fan nation of SI, on X, on Twitter, at BSB underscore Wolverine. Brandon, how you doing, my friend? Hey, Brandon. I'm good, man. I'm jealous. I'm hearing about these draft parties and Braylon's gonna, <laughs> gonna get the. What are you gonna go? Are you gonna go with the AI braids? You going straight back? We going zigzag? What are we doing? You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. I'm gonna add some of the AI flavor into it, man. Maybe one, two, three, maybe four, and kind of connect them a little bit. You know, I'm old. I don't want to do too much. I don't want to do too much. I, I want to keep it keep it 41, maybe 36. <laughs> Ooh, man, I got I got forty coming in June, man. You do whatever you want. We're, we're doing whatever we want in our forties out here. These days. Amen to that. I'm forty. I'm a man. Amen to that. Hey, Brandon, <laughs> let me ask you. You know, we're, we're, we've been so focused on the NFL draft, and you know, go back to the um, NFL Combine where eighteen Michigan Wolverines players were involved, the most ever uh, by one team at the NFL Combine. Who's left on this team? <laughs> Who's left? What's been happening uh, in Ann Arbor during spring ball? Uh, Will Johnson's left. They still, they still got, uh, they still got Will Johnson. They, realistically, they have a lot on defense. Maybe not as much depth as as we saw last year, or the year before. But the starting unit should be really good. Obviously, Rod Moore getting hurt. That's a that's a pretty big loss. That's a bummer. But the defense across the uh, the starting unit should be really really solid on the offense. A lot of question marks. I mean, you lose a quarterback like J.J., um, six offensive linemen, which is it's weird to have six linemen at the combine, but Michigan did that. So they're going to have a bunch of, uh, you know, a bunch of new faces up there. But guys who have played, um, you know, and then after that, you've got some guys hoping to take a big step. I mean, Colston Loveland might end up being one of the best tight ends in the country, but he, he just needs to take a step still, another step, uh, more production. And then the wide receiver room, same thing. Guys who have made a play here, a play there. Samaj Morgan, Tyler Morris, but they they're gonna need a lot more. And I and I mentioned JJ being gone. You know, the quarterback's probably, you know, that's probably question number one. So yeah, there's there's plenty to watch for on Saturday at the spring game, uh, heading into the season. But uh, defense should be really really good. Maybe not as deep. Offense, you know, we'll see. We'll see what the O line looks like. We'll see who runs away with that quarterback spot. And then uh, you know, Michigan, they're still gonna run the ball. Uh, and then we'll see who can step up and, and catch a few here and there. Brandon, let's uh let, let's not beat around the bush. Let's get right into it. You know, you lose Jim Harbaugh, which is one of the more iconic coaches in the last, uh, you can say, 25 years in college football in terms of what he's done. You lose 18 players. I meant count them, 18 players. A couple of them listed to potentially go in the first round. You're losing a lot. So let's not let's not cut any corners and say it's gonna be tough for the Michigan Wolverines. Now, my question to you is, Sharon Moore, first year head coach, what can we really uh, expect out of him and this team? Considering the conference has changed, has a different look to it, it has a different aesthetic to it. Insert USC, insert Oregon, insert Washington, insert Was uh, UCLA. Different aesthetic to it. What can we really hope for? And don't forget, $13 million was spent by that team down south. So what can we expect them to do in the Big Ten? Yeah, I mean, I think it's important to start right there with what you said. Even if Jim Jim Harbaugh had come back, it was it's been be, rough. be tough. Yeah, I mean, you look at who they lost personnel-wise in that schedule – 
comparing this year's schedule to last year's schedule is like Whew. it's almost like it's not the same sport. Um, some of the you know some of the games they're going to have and and doing it with a bunch of new guys, especially on offense. I mean, you know, if you're Sharon Moore, you didn't get a raw deal. I'm not trying to make it. I'm trying, I'm trying no, to make no, it no, not at all. You got a job. <laughs> you got a job. Absolutely, <laughs> a fantastic job. <laughs> exactly. I mean, all new staff. All new staff. A lot of new players. And a much much tougher schedule. Any way you slice it, at home and on the road, and you know, coming off fifteen and zero, it's not going to be that. I mean, yeah. there's just there's just no way there's no way that it's not a step backwards. And I say that with again the most respect in the world for Sharon Moore because I think I would have said the exact same thing for Jim Harbaugh. So, you know, you, you you start going down the schedule and looking at where there's potential wins and losses. And in the past, Michigan would always have maybe two or three. You look at the schedule, say. It's a two or three game schedule. It's it's Ohio State, it's Penn State, year to year maybe it's Michigan State, and then once in a while you'll have an off, you know, an out of conference game in there. This year it's like five or six. Like there's five or six games where if Michigan yeah. loses, you're like, well, that's what happens when you lose all these guys, when this you lose true. your whole staff, you lose Harbaugh, and you've got this schedule. So you you say, okay, if there's five or six that you could potentially lose, then you got to win half of them. And you got to get nine or ten wins. That's that's where it's got to be. Coming off of fifteen and zero with a defense like you think you're probably going to have, and hopefully you can piece it together on offense with a new quarterback, with a new O line. I, I think he's got you know nine wins has got to be the floor. I think that has to be the floor, and you hope to get to double digits, and maybe that puts you in the top twelve, and you're you're running around in the playoff again. That would be, I think that would be phenomenal for Sharon Moore in year one. Brandon, let me take a step back because I haven't seen you in a very long time. And since the last time I saw you, Michigan has become the national championship. So to that, I say congrats to you as well. Maz is wearing the shirt <laughs> representing uh, that team, 144, I do believe. With that being said, am I wrong? If I'm looking at the Alex Orgy situation, all we saw out of him was a lot of running. We understand he has the big arm, but not necessarily in control of it. Instantly, I think Joe Milton. Instantly, I think Joe Milton. Joe Milton came up here out of Florida, had the big arm. He could throw the ball out of the big house, but he couldn't complete necessarily a, a shallow cross or a five-yard hitch. Like, is that a fair comparison, or is he a little bit ahead of where Joe Milton was? And also, shout-out to the best album of all time right there behind you, and that is Thriller, <laughs> Michael Jackson. The kids talking about this Drake stuff, man. It's all about Michael Jackson. I mean, that's that's original. That's 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 Papa and Mama Brown right there that left that somewhere. And I go. was like, I got to. I gotta yes. have that for the. Baton. I got that too. It's an heirloom. That's exactly right. <laughs> exactly right. Um, I think I think exactly how you just said it is how I would describe it. I do think that Alex Orgy is a little bit ahead, but I no one really knows how much. We just haven't seen him throw it a lot. But Joe Milton was described as this freak show athlete with this arm, but accuracy was an issue going all the way back to yeah. high school. Alex Orgy's not built quite like that. Like okay. he was, he was more accurate in high school, but again. This ain't high school anymore, and he hasn't thrown it. And we know he can run. We know he's built like a fullback. You know, he's 235, 240. The dude looks like he can – if you want to run the ball with him 20 times a game, you can do that. You couldn't do that with J.J. McCarthy. And so I think if he ends up being the guy, that's that's got to be a much, much bigger part of what Michigan does on offense. And you hope that he can, you know, can translate that into some play action stuff and find some easy completions and – really rely on Colston Loveland in the middle of the field and maybe some shorter stuff and then take your chances downfield because he, he can throw it a long way. He's got a big arm. Um, I think everybody's in the dark on exactly what he's able to do because he just hasn't done it at this level. I mean, every time he was in, it, it was a run. Uh, I think the one time it looked like he was going to pass it, he ended up tucking it down and running again. Uh, so it's it's really hard to say. You, you love the potential and you love the, the 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 excitement that could come with him as a dual threat quarterback because he is such an athletic uh you know such an athletic specimen but you just don't know you just don't know what you're going to get with him throwing the ball and beyond him you, you don't know really either it's like question mark after question mark when you look in that com that uh, quarterback room so it sounds like every time you ask a player he's the first name mentioned now, you can read between the lines a little bit of that. You know, we're in spring ball. A lot could change. Kids are jumping in the portal all over the place right now. That spring ball is wrapping up. Does Michigan look for a quarterback there? We'll see. But I think you could do a lot worse than Alex Orgy if that's how it shakes out. But, it, yeah, it's a, it's kind of a wait and see right now to see, you know, what he looks like throwing the ball because we just haven't witnessed it yet. Hey, Brandon, uh, Ohio State had about 90,000 people uh, last Saturday at their spring game. 80,000. 80,000, was yeah. it? We all took a guess yesterday. 
What do you think Michigan will have? They usually get about, what, 30,000, 35,000? So neighborhood. What do you think yeah. they do now as the uh, national champions? I'm, I'm looking at the weather real quick. What do we got for tomorrow? It's for like, Saturday? Fi- it's like 50. 50. Yeah. 50 and sunny. None of this rain stuff. I, You know, I think, uh, I think there's a lot that people want to see. I don't. It just doesn't feel like Michigan has ever drummed this up to be some yeah. big, huge event. Like they, they don't go ones versus ones. I don't think we. We'll see if Sharon Moore switches it up completely. But under under Jim Harbaugh, it was more of a. They did the draft, so it was it was played like a real game. But you never saw ones on ones, and anybody who I mean, if you know if Donovan Edwards has got a hangnail, he's not playing. <laughs> so you, you, like, it's hard to it's hard to drum up a lot of excitement because different the game from two thousand and one. Yeah, there you go. Lloyd there had my go. butt playing no matter what I had going on. So it's just it's just kind of a different feel. I know some other schools, they, they really drum it up to be this big, monstrous event. Georgia, just, Texas, O State. Exactly. Yeah. Michigan just doesn't approach it that way. Not that that's wrong or right, but I, I think that certainly leads into – some of these these crowds that you see, and I don't I don't know about that eighty thousand. Was that a type? Did they mean to hit eight thousand? No, like, nah, it was 80. they had eighty. My was sister 80. was there. Uh, yeah. but, uh, I was gonna say, I Brandon, these games are on Fox too. These games are on Fox. I mean, crazy, right? I mean, yeah, football I mean, is I'll king. I'll be there. Yeah, I will be there, and and I, I don't even can I say this publicly, hoping I can leave after the first thirty minutes. Probably, right. I mean, like. <laughs> It's cool to be there. It's still football in April. Yeah. You still get to get out. It's if the weather cooperates, it turns into a great thing, obviously. And that hasn't happened in recent years. So hopefully it's pretty nice out on Saturday. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the what a good guess would be. Yeah, they're fifteen and zero. They're national champs, and you got a lot of stuff to look for. But how much are you really going to see? I mean, I guess getting to see Alex Orgy throw it around would be cool. I know he had a couple nice throws in last year's spring game. Um, and you want to see who's going to step up at some different spots, but. You're not going to see who the who the starting offensive line might be. You're not going to see any new bodies who could potentially come from the transfer portal from now until the fall. So it's it's hard to it's hard to build it up. In my opinion, uh, I do think Michigan could do better with it if they wanted to. I just don't think they care. I don't think they care to put eighty thousand or a hundred thousand in the seats. Other schools prioritize that. Michigan yeah. doesn't seem to, and that's that's fine. You get, get out there. Get some good work in, and hopefully you can identify some younger guys and some dudes that need to step up. That's that's what Sharon Moore is going to use it for. What do you think of Sharon Moore's uh, the coaches he's put together? The coaching staff. There's been a couple of oops uh, this past week and uh, a couple of <laughs> weeks ago, and then you got a guy like Wink Martindale there as well. What's your take on the whole staff? I, I've really enjoyed getting to talk to a couple of those guys. I you know Wink, I, I didn't know anything about him you know personally except for what you see from the NFL and kind of heard a little bit about him. I, he was, he was awesome. Like, I know he's like, he's kind of like the older guy. He's been doing it forever. And then Sharon's young first year head coach. I'm like, man, I wonder what that's going to look like. And I I think it like wink seems like the kind of dude that would just get along with anybody. He's a lot. He's got a little more, he's got a little more swag to him, a little more like style than I I expected to. He's kind of got like the, the high fade, like stylish mullet. He comes out wearing the Jordan (laughs) 11s. I'm like, Okay, Wink Martindale, I see you. So, because you kind of wonder what that's going to look like for an NFL coach who hasn't recruited in a really long time, but I think he's going to be totally fine in that regard. All the other defensive coaches seem to just love that they get the fact to spend time with him and learn from him because he is, as he said, kind of the the OG of this defense that Michigan's been running. Sure, it's going to look different. Wink's a little more aggressive than both of the last two coordinators. He said that in his own words. But it, it's, you know, it's pick and choose. What kind of guys do you have? Do you have very heady, savvy blitzers or do you not? He's not just going to blitz every single time. He's, he, did a lot, he did a lot to explain how the defense is going to look, and I'm, I'm excited to see what that unit looks like with a lot of talent across the board, especially up front. Uh, and then some of the other guys, yeah, that we haven't – I didn't know anything about Lamar Morgan. I didn't know anything about Coach Esposito. I didn't know anything about these guys. And I seem to uh, find myself really enjoying everything that they've had to say, kind of the way that they conduct themselves. I think Lamar Morgan, he might have said more concrete stuff in his one press conference than I've heard from the Michigan coaches in eight years. And I, you know, I don't know if that was that was on purpose. He said, "Yeah, when you know Rod Moore gets his surgery, and you kind of see the sports information director like, oh, we don't we don't do that here. Don't say that.' But <laughs> and then he he talked about Will, and everybody knows it. 
he's like, yeah, Will Johnson's a starter. I know you guys all know that. And I'm like, well, yeah, yeah, we do, but the coaches don't usually say that. So, <laughs> no, I, I just like I like the vibe of every guy that they brought in. Tony Alford again. I mean, like that was a pretty big surprise that all of a sudden the Ohio State running backs coach is just in Ann Arbor doing his thing. And it's wild. You know, he was pretty. It was very strange to see that. He was pretty cool to talk to about. Uh, you know, just what that's like nine years in Columbus. And now you're, you're in Ann Arbor where, and he, he, I thought he was going to slip up. He said like wearing this, uh, and he almost like, couldn't say, he said, he ended up saying wearing this block M. I was like, he doesn't even know what, what to call it yet. He's only been here a month, but no, I, I really like the staff. It's, it's a, it's a good mix of veteran and young. And I think it's going to be good for, for Sharon Moore and his first go. Brandon, let me uh, let, let's let's piggyback off that question right there. You talk about a guy, man, in terms of his 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 class of running backs that he had, whether it was J.K. Dobbins, whether it was Mike Weber, as a Michigan, as uh, a Michigan Detroit kid, and down the list of players, he's had some really talented running backs over the past twelve to fifteen years. What made somebody like that leave Ohio State? Obviously, we know Ryan Day is is, is a faltering situation, but Ohio State's still Ohio State. Did he speak to yeah. why he left? Did he speak to what that move was? He he wouldn't really get into it. Not okay, surprisingly, okay. I mean he's you know he's been there nine years. He's he he spoke glowingly about Columbus, the community there. You know he raised kids there. He's been there for a decade. You know he talked about how how good it was for his career professionally and the people that he was working with, and that's to be expected. I I do get the sense that there had to be some some you know fracturing with Ryan Day. I can't I can't really. I mean, why else would you? That's a completely lateral move yeah. in terms of title. I think maybe his title might have changed a little bit. I, you know, who knows about the money? I mean, if it was, but I would imagine it's all pretty similar across the board. So Ezekiel to, Elliott? to leave, yeah. I mean, you go down the list, the guys that he was able to get, and yeah. now, you know, I know everybody loves Mike Hart. I mean, I was a big fan of him when he played, and I thought he did a good job as a coach. Wasn't described as the most aggressive or or, or energetic recruiter. And, and Tony Alford is that he's had guys on campus already that never came when, when Mike Hart was there, that's just a fact. And so he, he, he hits the recruiting trail hard. He's going to have phenomenal inroads with the state of Ohio, which Michigan always recruits. And, and then, you know, beyond, I mean, you know, Michigan, Michigan's in Texas. So is Ohio state, Michigan's in Florida. So is Ohio state. So he knows all those coaches across the country when it comes to recruiting the top flight kids and, what running back wouldn't want to come to Michigan the way that they've used that position over the last couple of years. So he's got some big fish on the line already. We'll see how it shakes out. It's hard to get Ohio kids out of Ohio, uh, but he's trying. Uh, he already knows Donovan Edwards. Well, recruited him very hard. He knows Jordan Marshall. Well, he recruited him very hard when he was at Ohio state. So I think it makes a lot of sense for Michigan and they had a void to fill, but in terms of exactly why he left Ohio state, you could just kind of, he, he, he just said very vaguely it just felt like the right time to leave. Now you can do what you want with that, but that to me means like something wasn't something wasn't quite right. And so he had this opportunity. He said he's known Sharon for a while, thinks he's a star. And there you have it. Brandon, last one for you, and I appreciate your time here. I, I wanted to bring up uh somebody that you just mentioned. That's Donovan Edwards. He's a guy that I think um you know didn't have the season that he wanted to last year, but then all of a sudden at the end in big games, he shows up again and gets that big, big game Don kind of moniker to him. How big of a year is this from Donovan Edwards? What kind of year do you think we're going to see out of uh, Donovan Edwards? I, I think he needs to be on the field a lot, like, like a lot. I know you've got Kalel Mullings. I think he's a fine back. I, I just think Donovan, he's, you know, he's up 10 or 15 pounds. He looks I mean, he looks like he is ready to go. He's obviously got that that explosiveness that we we've, we've seen multiple times throughout his career. Not so consistently consistently last year, but when they needed it, he was there. We know he's a phenomenal receiver. So there's really, I mean, unless he needs a blow, I don't know why you take him out honestly. And that's no that's no shot to Kalel. That's no shot to anybody else in the running back room. But he's just too good at everything to take out and. You just hope that some enough of the other pieces are there for him to to put that on display. Can you find a serviceable offensive line? I think you can. The quarterback obviously is going to be a huge part of that. Um, but yeah, everybody thought that Donovan was going to have this, you know, one A one B season along with Blake Corum last year, and that he'd be off to the NFL. I mean, that was that was his plan. Like he spoke that out loud. That yeah, after my junior year, that'll be it. And and. With running backs, you kind of you kind of expect that almost. They just don't have, you know, the shelf life that a lot of positions do. But then, 
he he didn't have a draftable season. So now he's back. He's the guy. I think he's going to be the centerpiece of the offense, and I think he needs to be out there all the time. You know, hand it to him, throw it to him, get him 20 touches a game, and let him do his thing. Again, a lot of that depends on the rest of the offense and the offensive line, but he's dynamic. We've all seen it, you know, whether it's the horseshoe a couple years ago or in the national title game or, you know, when he first burst onto the scene as a freshman with some long runs here and there. Like, he's the guy, and uh, I think he's he's an every-down guy except for maybe – you know, if you want to do the hammer package when you need a yard or you're at the goal line, maybe that's Kalel. But I think it needs to be Donovan show this year. I really do. Brandon Brown, follow him on X on Twitter at BSB underscore Wolverine, publisher of Wolverine Digest, a fan nation of Sports Illustrated. Brandon, thanks so much for your time, buddy. Enjoy Saturday, and we look forward to talking to you down the road. I hope you can get out early, man. Leave early. Yeah, appreciate you guys. 30 (laughs) minutes. 30 minutes. That's it, buddy. (laughs) I'll see you, B. Uh, Thanks, thanks, buddy. You got it. All right, guys, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll go around the uh, NFL. Javi Baez has tied it up for the Detroit Tigers. How about that? Uh, but first, the message from Swiss. That's right, everybody. I do have some good news and some bad news. The bad news is insurance rates are going up across the board in Michigan, but the good news is that Swiss Insurance is here to help. Right now, more than ever, it's critical for you to have your insurance reviewed, and Swiss will make sure that your carrier does not slip in extra fees or raise deductibles. Call Mark at Swiss Insurance today or visit SwissINS.com and tell them that Woodward Sports sent you. We will be right back. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. Stop searching for a vehicle and start finding one. Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac makes it easy. We harness the power of multiple dealerships and own the biggest selection of GM brands in the area to get you the car you need. With the Les Stanford Group, you'll have access to four different dealerships, providing you with more makes, more models, and more choices. We're connected to more than 1,000 vehicles. And with so many high-quality CPO vehicles available, you'll find new car quality at pre-owned prices. You can start and end your search at lesstanford.com today. The most talked about Detroit media by other Detroit media, and we love it. It's the Woodward Sports Network. Come to any Lady Jane's haircuts for men and claim your throne for a king's treatment from one of our talented stylists. Open seven days a week, walk in anytime. Just get to a Lady Jane's today and receive a precision haircut, scalp massage, hot lather neck shave, and a hot towel treatment. A haircut should not be a chore, it should be an experience. And that's exactly what Lady Jane's has to offer. Open seven days a week. Walk-ins are always welcome. There's always a location near you. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. It's wicked awesome. Congratulations to the real coach of the year, Motor City Dan Campbell. Just put your head down and go to work. It's about to be fun, man. It's about to be fun. Woodward Sports. Nashville Hot is back and talking about Sorokis, nothing better. Crispy chicken and Woodward Sports, now that's what you call spicy. And that Nashville Hot sandwich, ladies and gentlemen, I tried it. It is hot. The pizza, the tenders, as well as the fries. A perfect takeout option they are as well, featuring head breaded fried chicken, New York-style pizza, and salads and sides, and they are all fresh. Check out their full menu at the closest Sorokis near you, or you can just go to Sorokis.com. They're popping up all over Metropolitan Michigan, so you will see one in your backyard. I promise when you go in there, you won't be let down. S A R O K I S. It's Roki.com. All right. Welcome back, Woodward Sports Network. It is time now to go around the NFL. Here we go, Tom Mazaway. All right, fellas. Let's keep it right here. Let's keep it close to home. Our Detroit Lions offseason workouts continue. It's up a couple of players did some talking. Yesterday, we played you a sound that no one could hear from Jared Goff. Today, I've got some great sound bites for you. Jared Goff talking to the Detroit media today on how he wants to win so badly for the Detroit Lion fans. Secure the long term future yeah. with this franchise. Yeah, man, it's been fun. The last three years have been been really fun and um, not you know not always easy, but but fun and, and hard. And um, I've been surrounded by a lot of good um, teammates and coaches that have you know helped me you know realize some of my potential and. You know, hopefully there's still a lot more there. But, yeah, I've, I've had a ton of fun and, and winning in this city and winning for these fans. And um, something that I've, you know, this off season has been so cool to go around and just the amount of people that have, like, been really heartfelt about, like, what winning here, even though we didn't win the Super Bowl, but winning the playoff game and making the playoffs, 
how heartfelt they've been and, and you know thank you th saying thank you and all that and you're like whoa like I'm just playing football but you know people are obviously really passionate here and um, that's been the most rewarding part is playing for the fan base here that that cares so much and the city that cares so much and um, being able to be a part of that you talked about it. what is the latest with the contract just to Oh, okay. uh, yeah, there's been discussions, but um, I'll leave it at that. Still confident that it'll be done at some point. Yeah, you know, you you, you hope so, but it, it, I'm not in control of that. You know, when a when a when an organization believes in you, or when a player believes an organization believes in you, you play a little bit different. You come to work a little bit different. You put you stay longer. You put in that extra work. I remember playing in Cleveland. Look, you can say what you want to about it. You can call me a crybaby. Blah blah blah. I didn't necessarily believe I was appreciated when I was in Cleveland. Didn't necessarily think I was appreciated by that franchise. But when I got to New York, you know, it was a whole different drum, man. I had a coach that I could connect with. I had a head man that cared about all his players and Rex Ryan equally. It was a lot of fun. I'm talking about from the training staff to the uh, to the chefs, I'm talking about to the cleanup people, to the equipment managers. It was a lot of fun, and I felt the fan base believed in me. And when the fans believe in you, you get that belief again. You play hard, man. I gave the New York Jets everything that I have. I had everything. I left it out there on the field. And I think that's what you see with Jared Goff. He left the Los Angeles uh, Rams, didn't necessarily believe he was uh, respected or, you know, um, uh, supported by that fan base or definitely not by Sean McVay. You saw the move he pulled. I mean, he traded him in the middle of the night uh, for a heck of a deal at Matt Stafford. So now he's at a franchise. He's at a place where the fan base loves him. He believes the organization is there for him. They support him. And he plays like it. He plays like a much better quarterback or he has played like a much better quarterback over the past two seasons. Jared Goff, I think I saw something that said his time here, 12,523 yards, uh, 78 touchdowns, and two playoff wins that ain't bad <laughs> that ain't bad pretty darn good to me yeah hey they also asked him about uh you know his time here and what's next for these detroit lions what are his and this team's expectations to crystallize like hey everything we're doing now is yeah i think we all know what the goal is and it's always been the goal i don't think it was it was not the goal last year i think um we got we got a chance to kind of taste it last year so you you, you get to see what it feels like but um, that's the goal every year, and, and this year it's absolutely the goal. Obviously, the expectations and our standards will rise and the outside expectations will rise, but internally we're, we're going to do the same thing we've been doing and um, try to raise our internal expectations and standards and um, be even better. I think Dan put it put it great at the end of last year is, is how much harder it's going to be, and we know that. It's going to be harder. People are going to be gunning for us, and um, you know it's going to be hard to first – defend our division title that's number one and then see where we can go from there but yeah absolutely um holding that trophy at the end of the year only one team gets to do it and, and that's our goal do you vocalize it though i mean you talked yeah. about it yesterday yeah did we talk about it yesterday um no we didn't really have like that setting all right so there you go just like we want we want a super bowl last year we wanted a super bowl we didn't know it till the end of that season but we were that close to getting to their first super bowl ever that's that's what lion fans want to see we just want to get to the big game and have a chance to win it. That's all, Bray. Was I asking too much? No, it's not at all. And I actually was going to ask this question. You know, he says manage expectations. What does he mean by manage expectations? Because I don't want to necessarily misquote him or I don't want to have, have been paying attention because there's no managing expectations. The expectations are Super Bowl. And the reason why is, and look, it's going to be tough to do. Whether they get there or not, it's going to be tough to do. It's a hard process. The schedule is going to be a lot harder. We saw that schedule already. But manage expectations. When you come that close, when you're knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door like that, seven minutes away from getting into the Super Bowl, and we all said if the Lions would have gotten the Super Bowl the way they were playing, they definitely had a shot, and they beat that team already before. So expectations are the Super Bowl. I'm not going to say win it or bust, but they definitely should be there. So don't worry about managing expectations. Just go out there and play like you did last year. Here, Here's how I take manage expectations. Okay. I, they should change it to navigate expectations. Because you can't win the Super Bowl the first week of the season. You cannot. We want the Super Bowl. They literally have to not even play every game, but play every day. Yeah, 25 weeks. Get better weeks. at practice. Yeah. You know, win the day. Uh, and I know it sounds so simplistic, but by managing expectations, it literally means, yes, the Super Bowl is our goal. But we can't look ahead to that. We're not guaranteed to win the division. We're not guaranteed to win a playoff spot. We're not automatically going back to the NFC Championship game. We have to put the work in to manage these expectations and just do it day in and day out. I like it. What would you guys grade this offseason right now? What they've done. 
A. Uh, um, a B plus because of the Cam Sutton. Okay. Like, it, it, which was no fault of their own, but it did happen to them this offseason. They are short now, a player on the back end. Um, so, uh, B plus. Next w- Thursday is big. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. It, it's big. As of right now, Maz, the offseason, which includes the draft as well. Yep. I'm at a at a solid B that's closer to a B minus than a B that's closer to a B plus. And the reason I tell you this, Davenport, injured player that we yes. hope can be the guy. Right. DJ Reader, yeah. an injured player that we've seen when he's on the field. We've heard about what he's done in the run game, not necessarily a stud in the pass game, although he gets to the pre- he gets pressure on the quarterback. Another injured player. You re-sign Emmanuel Mosley, injured player. So right Carlton now, Davis. Carlton Davis, look, damn good DB. Damn good DB. But we're trying to figure out, is he a DB1? Or is he a DB2 that's trying to become a DB1? So a lot of really good moves made. You add a lot of depth to it. And I'm very appreciative of the offseason. But let's not just give it an A yet because there are a lot of injury players signed and a lot of players in which we're hoping that this player can be there for the Lions. So I'll give it a, an 83% or 84%. Right. But 84% on Rotten Tomatoes. Right. 84% on Rotten Tomatoes. That, that's a good Still movie. Still pretty good. That's a, that's that's a, a good, good movie. movie. Still good. That's, that's, yeah. a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a fair assessment. Still you want to see it. Hey, 100% uh, I do. I'm going to change gears here for you. You want to do a break first, or do you want to do it right now? Yeah, let's take a break okay. first, and then we'll change gears. But Let it's me still tell you. NFL, folks, and okay. it's a huge story. Huge story. Huge. Let me tell you about our merch, though. Right, Pete Spivak? Back, Ryan Armani. Uh, well, actually, it's uh, Wake Up Woodward stuff, or did I get that wrong? No, I got it right. No, yeah, you got yeah, it right, whatever. Pete. Yeah, it works out. Wake Up Woodward, Monday through Friday, Woodward 8 to 10 a.m. right here on Woodward Sports. Join Matt Broder, Sam Flannel, Kool-Aid, JB, and KG every morning, just like the storm outside. It's a storm every morning here on Woodward Sports, Monday through Friday, 8 to 10 a.m. Check out the latest and the newest morning show. We'll be right back. The most talked about Detroit media by other Detroit media, and we love it. It's the Woodward Sports Network. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. Thank you to the Detroit Lions and Sheila Hamm for the best season in Lions history. Now it's time to let Brad Holmes cook. Woodward Sports. Come to any Lady Jane's haircuts for men and claim your throne for a king's treatment from one of our talented stylists. Open seven days a week, walk in anytime. Just get to a Lady Jane's today and receive a precision haircut, scalp massage, hot lather neck shave, and a hot towel treatment. A haircut should not be a chore, it should be an experience. And that's exactly what Lady Jane's has to offer. Open seven days a week, walk-ins are always welcome. There's always a location near you. Lady Jane's haircuts for men, it's wicked awesome. Congratulations to the real coach of the year, Motor City Dan Campbell. Just put your head down and go to work. It's about to be fun, man. It's about to be fun. Woodward Sports. It's sorry, it's a, like a monsoon out there. Everybody's got their windows open, apparently. <laughs> uh, let me tell you about the Boys and Girls Clubs of Southeastern Michigan and the Jerome Bettis Bus Stops Here Foundation. Proud to present the 3C Sports Conference to educate, inform, and inspire players, parents, and coaches in our local communities featuring impactful speakers like Jerome Bettis, Eddie George, and Adam Schefter, April 24th through the 26th. For more information and tickets, scan the QR code on your screen right now and sign up today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you... Oh, sorry, Braylon. Go ahead. When it comes to chicken sandwiches, I do have a sleeper for you. It is the Chicken Shack sandwich from Shake Shack. And now, all you got to do is go in, use co- uh, pro, uh, promo code Woodward to get your free sandwich with the purchase of $10. Go on, get yourself a sandwich, get yourself some crinkly fries, and then you can get another sandwich for free. Grab a shake and those crispy crinkle fries. Just use that code word Woodward. The sandwich is amazing. It's fresh. It's crisp. It's the Chicken Shack from Shake Shack. If you're going to look behind me, it just, it is uh, pouring outside. Yeah. It is not the eclipse either. Uh, <laughs> it looks kind of like it did when we had the eclipse. 
It's yeah. just oh, it's all dark. dark I, had, and I had a ball game and... scheduled for tonight in Lake Orion with my little St. Joan JV uh, girls softball team, and we have officially been. Actually, they rained us out about an hour and a half ago, and the rain wasn't started. But Mother Nature was right on time. Yeah, it was. They said between three and six, it's going to be uh, the worst around here. So if you're watching live, uh, you're feeling it. If you're not watching live, well, you're like, move on. So we will. A <laughs> uh, big, huge story today in this the is... NFL um, when it comes to Bill Belichick. Hey, guys, we talked about it. We talked about the show Dynasty that was on Apple TV that took you through the whole Patriots uh, from the 2000 to the end of the Tom Brady era. And we told you about Bill Belichick, Bill Belichick how he was painted on this uh, do- documentary, how he was you know, not getting along with players, some players, not getting along with the owner, Robert Kraft. Do you know? Because Atlanta, remember when they brought Bill Belichick in twice for interviews? They're like, oh, he's going to Atlanta. All of a sudden, no yeah. Bill Belichick. Turns out Robert Kraft called Arthur Mr. Blank. Blank for Atlanta and they talked and Kraft said you can't trust him he's not the guy for you talked him out of hiring Bill Belichick how about that now this is going to be maybe a little monotonous okay but can I read this uh, Albert Breer posted this today on his Twitter page it's one page from Bill Walsh's book Okay. Okay. Did you kill Bill Walsh? No, I did not. <laughs> I did not kill. But um, here's here's what it says. And forget, just give me 60 seconds. Take Let me your read time. It. 60 seconds on the clock. At the top of the club, you've got the owner. His cage. He, he doesn't have the knowledge he should have. He has a knowledge of business. He made it quickly. He wants things to be done quickly without quite knowing how. In the middle somewhere, you have the general manager talking about organizations. Yeah. Nobody knows why he's gotten to that position. He's firmly within the owner's comfort zone. He demands quite a salary for doing very little. Then there's a personnel man, often a frustrated player or a coach. He justifies his position position by sending the scouts out. Then there's the coach. He's in there with his assistants at midnight, looking over film again and again, trying to find out what's wrong. And while he's in there, the owner and the GM and the personnel man are out having dinner. Over martinis, they're discussing the team. The GM says, look, we've got the best facilities and administration and exhibition schedule. We've got, uh, we have set up every possibility to do a good job, the personnel man says. We've certainly got the players. We've got a great draft. I know because I read I read the papers. Look, everybody knows Smith is a guard, not a tackle. Everybody knows who should be playing instead of Jones. Everybody knows so and so should be the quarterback. <laughs> so they put their heads together. What do we do now? You get a new coach. The owners talk too. You know what I mean? Yep. Like this is at the core of what happened. A obviously a strained relationship between yeah. Bill Belichick and Robert Kraft and the owners have a relationship just like coaches talk yep. employees talk managers talk millionaires talk owners talk at the end of the day look man those guys 32 owners in the NFL they have the owners meetings but these guys all talk some are closer than others but they all talk year round they make deals together they make moves together they they give each other grace when they need players or deals etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. when you look at Robert Kraft He's a guy that is pissed at what happened the last eight years. Eight years in New well, England. Well, maybe not eight years, but I, you know what I mean. No, no, no. Yeah. I'd say eight in terms yeah. of players that got ran off, in terms of quarterbacks and players that were drafted, in terms of friction with Tom Brady. Yeah, that it actually, yes. Yes. That's a great point. 100%. Absolutely. It goes deeper than that. 100%. Gave him the reins. He kind of, you know, he wins the three early. Then he starts struggling a little bit. So now he's on the fence. Now he comes back. He wins three more. He gets the owner. He gets the reins. Now he's the GM. Now he's making moves. Now he's making drafts. He's single-handedly, and you don't want to say it this way because he is responsible with Tom Brady and the rest of the players that played in that era uh, of getting those Super Bowls, of attaining those Super Bowls, man. It's like you always say, he's not the best, but one of the best yep. coaches of all time. So you got to give him that credit. But at the same time, he's also at the crux of sinking this franchise. He ran Tom Brady up. Tom Brady never wanted to go play for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tom Brady never wanted to go play for another franchise. All he wanted... Guerrero, that's his name, Ryan. Yep. All he wanted Alex was Alex Guerrero, Guerrero on the sideline. Yep. 
who was fixing players. It's he Pedro Guerrero. You know him quite well. One. <laughs> Sorry. OJ. OJ's all over. OJ's everywhere. It always, everywhere. It always OJ goes back to OJ. Pedro Guerrero. You sank this franchise. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, Google, Google OJ Simpson, Pedro Guerrero. And Faye Resnick while you're at it. <laughs> you sink the franchise. The franchise is winning Super Bowls that's on top. That's on top of the, the pinnacle is football. And they were on top of the pinnacle. Now Tom Brady leaves. Then he wins the Super Bowl. So now Robert Kraft has that in his craw. And they've destroyed the Patriots. We're laughing at them. Who's on offense for the New England Patriots? Nobody. Jerry Mayo, that's the coach that you chose. I hope he does well. He's a player and a brother, so we're in the brother. But that's the coach that you chose. They are drowning the Patriots are, and they blame mm. Bill Belichick. So, also, if I don't tell Arthur Blank that this is what comes with this, if I don't tell this coach, hey, look, this is what happens when you when when Bill runs the show for you. If I don't tell him that, now once he sinks uh, the Atlanta Falcons, Arthur Blank's going to call Robert Kraft like, dang, I thought we were boys. Mm. And you didn't tell me anything. This is still some get back from Robert Kraft at where his organization is now. It's a little petty. But you know what, Maz? I understand it. I heard, I read this earlier this morning, and that story is since I can't find it anymore. So maybe it's not true. But Magic Johnson supposedly yes. wanted Bill yeah. Belichick as his coach. And Josh Harris had a talk with Robert Kraft as well. Again, that is not – I don't see that did, story I anymore. That even, was within the story. It was. That was within the Thank story. You. There you go. Yeah. There's another one. That was within the story. Magic Johnson was lobbying hard for Bill Belichick to be the coach. Yep. And then Josh Harris had the talk with um, – Kraft or Blank. Yeah, Arthur Blank or, yep. or Robert Kraft, whoever, yeah. about Bill Belichick. So that was within the story. And look, I, here's the thing. I think Bill Belichick could coach the team. Where he ran into the problem was when he started drafting the talent. GM, yeah. The guy at Houston now, the guy responsible for making all of the picks at Houston. Used to be. Used to be a player personnel guy for New, New England, England. But. Casario. But he wasn't making the decisions. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. He wasn't, Bill Belichick was drafted the players. And his dog. So you can only do <laughs> what you can do yeah. when it comes to that stuff. Yeah. So just a, just a thought on that. That's It's huge, this story. Bill Absolutely. Belichick is on the unemployment line. By the way, next week. He's not anymore. Next week, he's going to be on Pat McAfee as a draft consultant. Analyst. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Does he coach again? Go sit down somewhere. No. Does yes. he coach again? Hold on, yes. hold on, hold on. Ask that question a little more detail. Does he coach in the NFL or does yeah, he coach? coach? NFL. No. Yes. No. I, I keep telling you why. I, when we were going through the jobs and talking about what was open, what was it, nine head I'll coaching? I'll tell you who he's going to yeah. coach next. I save you it, already man. know. Save it. Save it for, for, save it for when I say it, and then you can tell me. Okay. He's not coaching. Because, because you think it's a young man's game. It's not even about young man. It, it is, but it's the connectivity. You got to be able to connect. Let's let's go to an individual that's not as old as Bill Belichick. Jim Harbaugh couldn't connect with his players for the first six years he was here. Struggling. And it got worse and worse and worse. And eventually, which I give him a lot of credit because it's hard to turn around when you're that old and, or when you're that set in your ways as a man in life. Changed his ways, opened the door. He got younger on the staff. He got a little connectivity. He opened that door. He let players have some say. Things started changing around in Ann Arbor. Bill won't do that. And that's why that connectivity, the way he wants to run it, the way he wants to be the GM, it's not going to happen. If it didn't happen now and this stuff is leaking out now, how is it going to happen in the future, Ryan Almighty? Give me that team that Bill Belichick will coach next so year. So first, I agree with you. Okay. But we're talking about two different things. Okay. I'm not saying, will he connect with the players? I'm saying, will he coach in the NFL again? And I say, yes, there are two teams. Two. Head coach? Head coach. One? Carolina. Is Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones would hire Bill Belichick in a heartbeat. That's one. Two, because Mike McCarthy ain't having that job this year, next year. I told you he's not making the playoffs. The other, and if they don't make the playoffs, Bill Belichick is going to be the head coach of that team. Two. They the same age. Two. <laughs> if the New York Giants have a terrible year, I could see him returning home to the New York Giants as well. I could see the New York Giants move because the Mara family is another family. Mara, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, look who yeah. we're talking about yeah. here. Yeah, 
I, okay. I stand, I, st- I, st- Mara, I stand corrected. Jones. I still don't think the Dallas Cowboys job is because it looks like Alaska. I, I, I actually looks like Michigan has the men. But anyway, I don't understand the Jerry Jones thing to be able to work with uh, Bill Belichick. Too much control. They're going to fight over control. They're two old geezers. They're going to sit up there and fight over control. I love that word, by the way. It's, it's a great word because it's not a it's customer. It's a great word. That's the words love it. Geezers. The New York situation, I can see that. I mean, the Mara family is the same individual and people that made them draft <laughs> Daniel Jones. I can see them going back to Bill Belichick. He did help them win two Super Bowls in the 80s. What do you think, Maz? Three, actually. Uh, if he didn't coach this year, I think Braylon's probably right. He's yeah. probably, maybe he could go there as a president of a team or something like that. That type of thing, something to oversee a team. Like, let's say Carolina could bring Bill Belichick in to oversee that team eventually. A team like that. I don't see him as a head coach anymore. How do you sit out with nine jobs and you don't get one of them? It's because of what we talked about today. Robert Kraft, MF them up and down the league. You know what the great equalizer is? What is it? Time. Time heal old wounds. It's the great equalizer. You get far enough away from something and people forget about the minutia. People forget about that stuff. Braylon spilled his uh, Sprite over here on the table. Well, they can see you wiping it up. That, that, <laughs> that Sprite was not meant to be drank. Not- he dropped it to begin the day. And I told him, don't open that for like a half hour. <laughs> It was fine, <laughs> and now he spilled the damn thing. Uh, exactly. Right. Right. I'm glad it was a short sprite. Was right. it a little one? No, it, it's, it's, oh, it was a no, it's regular, sure. oh. regular size. It's supposed to be by the way, anyway. by the way, what what the hell happened to soda prices? So, I used to get I used okay. to get three everything else. I used to get three twelve packs from Kroger okay. for ten dollars. Okay. Now it's eighteen. Pop. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Pop. Eighteen for soda. Pop. Okay. I don't okay. drink it anymore. Okay. 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 <laughs> I've got the best one for you. Go ahead. I've never heard anything like what I'm about You're to gonna t- tell me about eggs. Listen, Go you, ahead. Eggs I'm, and milk? listen, what I'm about to tell you, you never heard anything like this in your I life. I bet. Okay. It was Sunday working in the yard. Um, needed a little bit of a break. Yeah. We run up to Taco Bell. Okay. Oh, yes. Who went? Who went to Taco Bell? Me, the family, Nicole, and the kids. We run up to Taco. Just oh, the dr- drive through. We just get in the car, and drive. Which one did you do? Uh, Moran and Harper? Mac. No, Moran and Mac. Moran and Mac. Yeah. I remember. Oh yeah, I yeah, can't yeah, yeah. wait. I'm gonna let you go. I'm going. I'm gonna let you go. Just very simple order. The twelve, the twelve pack of hard shell tacos, party yeah. pack. My wife says, "Can you th- can you add some tomatoes to those tacos?" Great. Right? Yeah. Fine. Hard, 12 hard shell tacos, add some tomatoes. What's it usually cost? I, I don't know. Okay. I mean, I remember the 12 for 12 deals. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah sure. Right? I got you. Taco okay. Tuesday. You know, whatever. Get to the window. $31. No. Yes. For the 12 pack of tacos. Listen to this. The fact that we added tomatoes, which, mind you, there was like yeah. three little dinky yeah. diced Tomato. You didn't use half a, ta- half a tomato on the 12 tacos. You didn't use a half a tomato on any of the 12 tacos. No. The sprinkling of the tomatoes cost me $8.60. So it's $23. It's $24. Yeah, $23, yeah, so it's $24. Yeah, two bucks a taco. Two bucks a taco. It's so but, f- but $8? Yeah, I know. I hear you. And 60 cents for the tomatoes? I- You've never heard anything like that in your life. So what did you say when you pulled up to the window? Shock and awe. I told you about my Wendy's experience. Shock and awe. One time I go to Wendy's on my way to on my way to one of our remotes. I'm like, I'm an hour early. All right, I'll just get a single. Single cheeseburger. Eight dollars and twenty five cents. I told him, just keep it. I'm not paying eight dollars and twenty five cents for a single cheeseburger. No. From Wendy's. I'm sorry. Or anywhere. That's S- disgusting. I used to go Such to the soccer shame. when I was growing up because I grew up right down the street. I grew up on Eight Mile and I grew up in between Eight Mile and Livernois on off Woodward, in between Woodward and Livernois. So literally right down the street. Taco Bell right there on Nine Mile. I used to go there all the time. Tacos regular forty nine cent, and then regular Supreme, well meaning hard shell, regular Supreme fifty nine cent. 
Soft tacos, regular, 59 cents. 69 Sprint for Supreme. I like how you keep the S off. Now, it's $1.89 for a regular taco. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's $1.99 for a regular uh, Supreme. Two oh nine, you guys get the gist. Two nineteen for a soft taco supreme. Get out I knew of here. exactly where you were going Stop when you it. said it because Taco hey. Bell used to be my favorite spot back, and I can't eat it now. It's dog food. Pete, right? what's your uh, your Sunday Wendy's meal cost you? Twenty seven dollars. Oh, uh, yeah, I get the big one. I get the triple with the large fries and the pop. It's uh, sixteen dollars. Sixteen dollars for one sandwich. Well, it's the triple, but yeah, I don't it's, care. It's sandwich, yeah. I never heard of a word triple. of one person sixteen dollars at a fast food restaurant. Man, when I was college, college student, no money. You get ten, you find ten bucks, you scrounge around, get you might you know you you're too young, but you kind of know what I'm talking about. You get ten dollars back in the day with McDonald's, uh, their menu, the value menu, Oof. the dollar menu. No ten dollars could do some damage. There's no dollar menu. Ten dollars, you can get a single <laughs> get, double cheeseburger is ninety nine. You get three fries for a dollar, literally three of them. Like now, you you better come to McDonald's. You, if it's two well, people, y'all better have forty bucks wanna, between the two. If you want to know why prices are high, talk to me off the air. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Sleepy. <laughs> Sleepy. Talk to me off I the can't. air. I got some thoughts I about can't. it. I can't. <laughs> Sleepy. I can't survive. <laughs> I can't. Well, you're gonna have to. I'm man. glad I don't have little kids anymore you, in the house. You're gonna have, have to figure it out. You're gonna have to figure it out. Pete's not gonna be with us the next couple days. You know where oh. Pete's going? Where's he going? Yeah, Pete, Pete, where, where are you, are you going, going the next two days? It's the uh, major pinball tournament in Kalamazoo, pinball at the zoo. So I'll be okay, playing pinball and on the professional tour that. for the next that, three uh, days. We talked about that two weeks when they were out. Yeah, yeah, no exactly. Pete's a professional. He's playing pinball. Pinball. Oh, my God. Pinball player. We yeah, know, I got a guy. One of, my, one of our stage hands at Fox 2 literally builds pinball machines. Oh, wow. It's, it's incredible. Can he build me that Rocky machine that Paulie yeah. threw through his beard? Yeah, he probably could. Oh, I love that. I don't sweat you. I don't sweat you. I don't sweat you. <laughs> oh, I and can't then, hold me no more. Then he turned around and asked for that job. I can't hold me no more. <laughs> All right, Brian, get us out of here. You're broken. Heck You're busted. Heck of a show. Hell of a you show don't show talk that guys. way about <laughs> your sister, okay? I promise you I'm only 41. It makes it seem like we're a little bit it's older. Awesome. Here. We're having some fun. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. We'll have more. And uh, if you're outside, get outside. It's, uh, it's dark. It's rainy. It's stormy. It's uh, it's not safe. So uh, get inside. Tigers lost. We, well, In it, the ninth. Bl- blame the rain. In the ninth. Blame it on the rain. 5-4. Oh. Silent Mike, Peace Fire back. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Ryan Armani, Braylon Edwards, Tom Mazaway. We are Armani and Edwards with Maz. And this is Woodward Sports Network. There you go. Bye-bye. See ya. See ya.